Do, do, do. So, well, congrats first and foremost on surviving season one. Um, open admission, you were supposed to survive uh, season one, <laughs> maybe with a few scars, uh, but I was always planning on you surviving season one. Um, season two is where we enter into quote unquote sandbox territory. I'm not going to save you. Things will get a lot more dangerous. And, um, you know, you could die in any session, essentially. Uh, it, you know, because we, we, you could get multiple knockdowns, things like that, you know. So, I will never kill you outright outside of the death rules unless you're literally eaten by something or you or you fall from like a thousand feet. I'm not going to say, oh, you're knocked out, take one from your vitality. That's just going to be straight up death, you know. So, that, that sort of stuff can go on. Just as a as a proviso, so don't so don't go jumping off buildings and expecting oh I'll just lose a vitality point because it's it's so we shouldn't meet on top of the tower anymore is what you're saying no I I N might just stay away from not you and nameless no anyone else probably <laughs> or any combination thereof probably but not you and nameless um but it's been a few months it's been two months since our last session so um uh, our last session where you in the and the, the great moot uh, went to hell in a handbasket very, very quickly with the Harkon, who is the, the Reaver King, actually taking control of the Falkir, which was a big no-no. Um, his main mage, or his main advisor, called something from the sea, which turned out to be a rather large black dragon, which annihilated the moot. And it had sort of selective flame, didn't it? So it was blowing all of this uh, uh, black fire at everybody. And it would only tend to be scorching those who weren't on the side of the Reaver King, which is very, very strange. And as you guys made your escape with Lochnia um, piloting the ship, uh, the dragon flew overhead towards the Lothane Valley. And as you've read, uh, that dragon actually attacked Lothane before you got back. Um, it destroyed perhaps a quarter, maybe even half of the city before flying off and roosting in the mountains. So uh, when we see the, the southern mountains, we're talking about if you can get the the map of the Lothane Valley up, you should have it. Um, uh, where you see Kaladin and Durakal at the bottom there, so that's where it's been roosting. That's where it's been seen flying around and attacking, uh, you know, taking goats, things like that. Very large thing. And it has also disappeared for long periods as well. So it, it, it's been seen flying around and then it'll disappear again. Not normal behaviour for a dragon, to be fair. But if you can see the south to Snowbridge on the bottom right there, the Snowbridge Road is blocked off because of this dragon. Uh, nothing can get by. Actually, nothing can get by because it, it, it's just annihilated by the dragon as it goes through. So, um, what have you guys been doing in the Bowery? So, let, 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 let's come back to the Bowery. What have you guys been doing? So, I've given you a a bit of uh, a bit of paper with with the things about the outlaw, the, the outlander barony on it. So you've had a little bit of time and you finally got a nice list of your agents there. Nice, a uh, 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 full on list. So what's been going on? What's been going on the past two months? Regale me, what what, what you've been doing? Been building and enjoying oh. my harem. <laughs> we can work that out, yeah, cool. <laughs> um, um, really helping definitely. rebuild the fort. Mm -hmm. Cool. Cool. So I'm um, um, working. Oh. Don't get gone. Go. Oh, um, what like working on? Yeah, the Bowery, the defenses, so we can also start building. Um, building up Brindle, so like the people camped around have real shelter and things like that. Mm -hmm. and... Nice. Okay. No, I like that. Cool. So, um, how are you guys feeling about these people turning up? Because obviously, in between, it's been two months now, and we're going into the winter months. Um, as I said, the Tempest months that are a big problem elsewhere in the world, they do affect Albion. Um, but generally, if you are if you have natural protection on Albion, like Camelot does, for instance, um, the Thane Valley definitely does, then you're, you're generally okay from the Tempest months. It's more of a... It's kind of like coronavirus, really. You know, you're advised to stay indoors, but you can move around. You know, it's not like... It's not like in the Roman Empire where they're like, everyone needs to fucking go home and stay there. It's not... No, it's... You can actually go around... Everything's a practice. You know, so um, you know the the, the war months are not upon us basically. So 
Armies very rarely march in the Tempest months. Um, but uh, your one seer who is there, okay, a Gorthin, he may be able to um, sort of see the strands of fate and see when, when the Tempest months, how long they're going to last for. Old ones in Albion can do that. They're, they're, that's one of the powers that they do have. They can sort of see how long these months are going to happen for. Um, so... Um, as these months have been going on, Arden would have been training archers. So we have people like at the ready and especially like some of the new people who've come in and know how to use bows and stuff like that. That's cool. Um, yeah. Do you want me to tell you? Is true. Let's, let's do some rolling then. Let's do some rolling. So I'm going to roll, um, 5d20. Let's see how, uh, so of all these people who've come outside the Bowery, um, they, they've come from far and wide basically to have shelter and to have security. You guys have a reputation for winning battles and for not really turning people away. So would you be scouring them to see if there's any fighting men or women there? Or would you be leaving them to just to just protect themselves? I mean, I, mean, I can't speak would. for names. I mean, I think at least, you know, we'd, we'd let people know that if they wanted to fight, you know, people are always welcome to work with us and then that'll help them you know, they'll get paid, they'll be get fed, mm -hmm. they'll be housed, you know, in the Bowery. Okay. You know, we, we basically, instead of having to make their little squats outside, they'd actually, we, you know, work on having a place for them. So, they wouldn't the, the, the problem is with that, we, we end up taking every wave and stray, and looking at the accounts, we pay out 200 gold in you do, uh, yeah. tax, and yet we get in just over 100. Oh, the more people we take on. Um, you guys yeah, are we, losing money. Yeah. yeah, you guys are losing money at the moment. Um, so you will need to look for other ways of earning money. Um, yeah. I'm open to suggestions, but there, there are, as, as John says, yeah, there, there, there is a big. Sorry, Lockmere says there is a big. Uh, there's a big drop off per month. Um, well, we could, uh, we well, could always hire um, Androcles out for more modelling jobs. <laughs> well. <laughs> If the people are staying at the Bowery, like, the archers could, like, you know, hunt. The people could, um, what's it called, earn their keep by working on building, you know. And, okay. like, we're also offering them protection. So the least they can do is help build up the Bowery. So then we can start building yeah. real homes for yeah, them. Yeah, that's a good idea. So yeah, I mean, like part, of, like, part of the thing is when you're, you know, training troops, like, for, you know, starting, they have to, a lot of it is just building up the physical strength to use the you know weapons effectively you know. so i think what androcles would be doing at the very least would be because he you know he's he's kind of like the stuff that happened up north has kind of frustrated him so he wants i think he's he's going to spend a lot of his energy just trying to rebuild stuff mm -hmm. you know and partially in preparation for what's coming like definitely you know get the walls in order and but also help build up the towns a little bit. Yeah. So I think he would take men that were interested in learning, to, you know, in joining the army and just put them to work and just get everybody <clears throat> building and such. And, I mean, you know, there will be, there will come a time when I'm going to start charging you wages for these men. Uh, right now, you're getting their services gratis because you're providing safety. So no one's really asking you for pay. Uh, just food, you know, things like that. Um, we won't go over the food and stuff for the past, you know, two months because we'll just assume that you've had time to go and do that. Um, but there are forty-four untrained fighters there, who who you found um, as you've been haranguing and looking around and, and and making judges of people and seeing how they work. So forty-four untrained fighters. These are people who will need to be trained. Um, I'm going to say you can train them to pretty much do what you want. So if you want twenty archers and twenty men at arms, you can do that. Um, you have currently 55 men at arms and 15 Castellan guards at the moment. And of those uh, men at arms, there are 20 archers, 20 rangers, sort of a thing. Um, so, Castellan guards, obviously, you're not going to be using them. They're, they're, they're just there to keep the peace in the castle. Um, so. I mean, Andrew plays a more just. Sorry. Go ahead. Oh no, you can go ahead. 
uh, I mean, Androcles would kind of push Nameless to train as many of them into, you know, work as a functioning shield wall as he's willing. And because, uh, you know, for like having people like kind of people attacking the way Androcles does works to an extent, you know, but you, you really need more people on the shield wall. Like if there's anyone who particularly wants to learn how to fight like Androcles, you won't turn him down, but he'd rather they trained to work in the shield wall because that's long-term more helpful for a group. And what would, what would, what would... Did he just admit Nameless was uh, probably better in this capacity? I mean, so, he, well. the, <laughs> he, Androcles would never say that out loud, but Androcles doesn't fight with a shield at any point. He has never really t you know, used one in any capacity, so shield walls are not his place. He doesn't function in one. He would cause um, more trouble than he would help. No, I mean, but that's he, fine. He would, send, he would send men to you to train after he's done making them, you know, work on rebuilding and doing the physical, you know, like, just, the, like, the muscle build, like, and just the physical work to help them build strength and endurance and then send them to you to actually train. Do, what do we have in terms of equipment? Do we have the necessary equipment to... Absolutely not. Okay, no. great. Um, so, so you have enough equipment to equip the uh, the men you already have. So, so you already have fifty-five men. So, so these archers have fifteen bows, uh, uh, and the men have like you know, um, spears, swords, things like that, shields, enough of them to be well equipped. You would need to ask um, uh, Alfred. Oh who, God! Who is? Who wait, is wait! Your... Before we do that, I have a question. Um, what about the, like, I know you mentioned how many men we have, um, but I was wondering if any of the women, because they are able to be trained, like, if we can get them working at, like, being Fletchers and things like that, like, just making supplies and things like that. Ha, we're in fight. Don't be train. silly. No, I'm joking. Um, yeah, you because definitely even, could do that, yeah. Because, like, a woman, I, I mean, not being sexist, but just, like, factually go up average woman going up against like a giant viking warrior probably is going to lose just because like that sheer balance of like force mm -hmm. but um they could do things like help supply our arms or be archers things like that sure sure so, so that, like we can have more men in the shield wall so so some more people working around the the, the forges and things like that so let's that, roll Let's roll for apprentices then, shall we? Let's roll. I'm thinking one. so that it's more like, um, kind of like Rohan in the sense where the women do all know how to fight, even if they're not like an active part of the army, like okay. that type of thing. You haven't rolled particularly well in terms of apprentices. There are two who you think are of uh, specific use. Both are smiths. So these these are people. These are girls who have been trained uh, by their fathers. You know. Um, just to just to be working around the forge, their fathers have since died uh, to, at Falkir hands, and now they're left without a job, but still with apprentices, you know, apprentices' skills. Okay, well, we can place them with the blacksmith, and they can help make uh, weapons. Can yep. um, we're near the mountains? How hard would it be for us to get to have men get stone from the mountains? Um, it, that's a big big uh big big task um because okay, you, you need to be about... setting up mines and things like that and you can do it like i'm not saying you can't okay how many people are still in fletcher's watch um you'd have to send scouts there to find out because maybe we send some scouts there and we kind of do what like dark age peasants did with like the roman um buildings and we just used building materials from there to help build up brindle and the bowery just to have like a really strong base Good to me. Yeah. Hello. Yeah. People disconnect. No, 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 no. I'm there. I'm. I'm just. I'm listening to what people saying. Cool. Um. In response to your question, Androcles, you don't know. But we will get to that. Um. So. Has... Oh. So you're you're thinking about getting people to go out and... a lot real quick. I'm just gonna. 
okay. troubleshoot. For okay. A um, so you guys are so you're thinking about getting people from Fletcher's Watch. Okay. So this this can happen in a few months. What I've gone by, why not? So Fletcher's Watch. How many people do we get back from Fletcher's Watch? Let's just do a DM roll. So nine people return from Fletcher's Watch. Um, who are you sending there to negotiate with them, to talk to them? Maybe Bjorn, because he's our head scout. I would agree with that. Okay. I'm going to add another dice roll to that then. All right. So Bjorn um, goes over there and essentially gives them a rousing speech, and he takes Gorthin with him, and he gives this rousing speech about how people are being kept safe near the Bowery, and if they don't want anything like this to happen again, then they'll come back with them and, and help them out. Um, 28 people actually respond to this after Gorthin um, randomly sets a house on fire that, that it has no one in it, j j just to give them a little taste of, of what will happen if people start coming through and burning things. Um, and Bjorn says, and, and Gorthin isn't that powerful. You know, you know the, the, the people that the Falkir have are much more powerful than this. But we've at least we've got one who can help you. And to that, 28, 28 people actually leave their homes, and they come down to the to the Bowery. So these are people who have agreed to dismantle their homes. So I'm going to give you some resources. So let's do resources. So two hundred wood. 70 stone. Now, that how, mean, that'll mean what, nothing how, to you oh. right now. That'll mean nothing to you right now uh, because you don't know how much things are going to cost moving forwards. I do. I've got it all here. So when you tell me what you want to do this session, I didn't want to give you too much to read because this is enough, you know, what I gave. So if you tell me what you want to do in this session, I'll tell you how much it costs and we'll work it out going forward as well. So, Are the walls of the Bowery secure yet? No. Uh, Lochnir did say something to that effect. So, Lochnir, what was your point on the walls? What did you want to do with the walls? Um, just make them fit for purpose, really. Mm -hmm. um, place the stone where necessary. Uh, any mortar and uh, uh, when you it was say at one point, but... when you say fit for purpose, do you mean uh, completely want... as they were, or do you mean just so any no Tom, Dick, and Harry can just vault over the walls? As, as they were, as the, as they were, okay. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. That's going to take yeah. around 150 stone. Uh, you currently have 75. Maybe we should. Maybe we should start by just trying to make each wall strong enough, and then go back so that like we don't put it all into like one spot, you know, and then the, leave. The, the problem people. is, if if you do a half-assed job, up with, then you've got to take it all apart to do it properly. So you work twice. I'll just do it. Right, once. Even if we end up doing two walls out of the four. Or I mean, is um, that how it would work in one wall at a time? Where we'd have to take it apart, Dean? What are you, how are you saying? Or is it more like, like, like if we shored up each of the uh, three areas I, on the walls I, and they're strong, but not as is, do we need... It's, it's, not, it's not a game thing, it's, it's a real life thing. If, yeah. If you, oh yeah. No, I just I didn't know how it worked. That's all I say. We could reuse the stone, but it's on power to actually get the stone. Away so, I I, I had a, a little like um I had a look online the other day of top tips so, so I can stop talking over people when they're getting into their stride. So when I have information to give you, sometimes I'll put it in chat while you're having a little a little gap there. So um, it is important that you all jump in. So um, in terms of your question. Um, it's going to take, to get out all of these walls back up spick and span to near about where they were, um, it's going to take around 150 stone. I just looked, you got 70, which is which is a good start. Um, looking at uh, looking at the mountains around you, if you, with, with the people that you've actually got, the 28 people, um, some of them are, are children, some of them are women, but women can still work mines, um, if they want to, though. Uh, that you can, you, you can definitely prospect up there to see if you can get stone, because the stone that is around here, um, Lochnia, you, you can see, you've been around fortification before, you can see the stone they've made the keep out of is the same stone that's from the mountains. At, at least, you know, it's the same type of granite that, that's actually up there and slate and stuff. So, 
you can actually, you, you know, it's going to be take some doing, but you could definitely get that project started if you wanted to. You won't be able to complete it this week, obviously. Um, but you can it's, definitely it's, get it started. It certainly takes time. Yes. I, mean, I think as, as we've got sort of limited resources, mm -hmm. uh, or we should repair, probably be the to get attacked, which the, the walls to the east are actually intact, are they? I mean, are these walls here. Yeah. The well? and the ev east. Everything with they with they no, they're fine. They're fine. They're completely fine. They're fine. Yeah, they're okay. they're sturdy as a rock. Yeah, they're fine. Um, only only yeah, the so red areas are are basically. Okay. Um, start with this area then. And, cool. uh, any stone masons and anything like that. And might know what to do. Mm -hmm. We need to remember there was some uh, machinery here. There were there was a baluster, yeah. There was there was a siege engine, yeah. It's rusted, old rusted sea, uh, baluster that's up there. Uh, okay. Um, wasn't there something used getting stuff stuff up on? There, the there was there was a winch. Or... Yes, there was there was there's a winch. Yeah, uh, the winches, right? Okay, and there's winches. That sort of thing. You could um, definitely do that if you wanted to disassemble the winches. Um, I'm probably going to take a little bit of time away from your rearming then. Um, so instead of you being fully rearmed uh, for next week, you're going to be half rearmed for next week, your men. And you can have Alfred come over and take away the ballast of the winches from there and use them in construction work. You can definitely do that. And that would allow you to have your wall spick and span by next session. If you want yeah, to do that. Good. Is everyone all cool with that? I'm good with that. Yeah. Alrighty. We should also probably start thinking about some kind of small mining operation. You do have 24 of the people, be, man. We need to be mining and quarrying is what we need to really for the stone and actually. Mm hmm. Um, so yeah, well, go. whichever we should probably. We'll have a look at the quarry sites used to build this to see if there's any usable stone left, and if not, we'll have to. Yeah, cool. Get a get somebody out who knows what they're looking at. Who, Sounds uh, good. To try and find a turn. Maybe we c you could send some. Uh, maybe you could actually send some scouts up into the mountains to see if they can find any quarries. Things like that. That could that could be something you could do. That'd be fine. Uh, <clears throat> if that's what you, you guys want to do, that you happy to do that? Oh uh, yeah, mm -hmm. uh, makes it easier than setting up a quarry of our own straight away. So. All right. Okay. So um, they they were they have had they headed off about a week ago now. Okay. So so a week ago from the start of this session. So the session has now started, obviously, and they're due back any day now. Um, so, the work to redo the walls is going pretty well. You know, so I'd say they're halfway done now. Um, the people outside in their tents, you know, they're going out foraging, they're going out hunting, things like that. Um, a few of them have been brought back into the into the actual the keep itself to be trained. How are you training these people? So you have forty four untrained fighters. What are you wanting to do with them? What do you want? You have fifteen archers so far. And forty men at arms, and fifteen castellans who are under um, Shen, who is the castellan of the Bowery. Um, she's trained them pretty well. You know, they've even got uh, surcoats on that are black, so they don't have anything else on them. They're just black uh, because you guys don't have any coat of arms yet. You can make some if you wish, um, but they're you know they're they're, they're just around. She's given them a colour so people know who they are essentially, um, and they they you can they, they've broken up a few fights. They've you know, knocked a few people on the head for selling contraband. A uh, contraband is in things that have been stolen from different places and things like that. Um, but people who've looted stuff from the dead who've been selling things have been getting a, a lashing as well. Um, and food thieves. That's another big thing that's been going on. But nothing for you to really go into. So how are you going to train these 44 untrained fighters? Um, well, it depends, I guess. A, on equipment because obviously they need the equipment in order to train. Mm -hmm. um, and how many people we want in the shield wall, because, I mean, for example, 10 men isn't really a shield wall. 
So, no. yeah, it depends on what you guys feel numbers should be. Like what kind of percentage split we should look at. I agree. If we're going to have a shield wall at all, we should have, it needs a lot of men in it to be effective. Um, yeah. I also worry that if we're in a um, in a fort kind kind of situation where uh, you're probably not going to get use of a shield wall because you're either going to be up on the um, the parapets or you're going to be down um, either protecting the holes in the, the uh, wall or even <clears throat> the main entrance. Um, we're just not going to have them in. Like, if you put them all in a shield wall, then you cover one area, and then that's pretty much it. So my feeling would actually be to not have a shield wall, because I don't think we've got enough men for it. Should we have, like, a different, like, different mana pools? Well, shield I walls mean... are fine. I mean, the, the number of men is just how wide you go. So, I mean, if, if you've got facing, you know, a 300 wide shield wall, you've got to match it. Yeah. I mean, but, I mean, we if also have... Maybe you on the side. I've, cause I've, I've been in shield walls, and yeah, where you're fighting. I mean, we but have good like, two skill. main entrances, yeah. So if we, if we, you know, if we keep them funneled to those two paths up to the keep, then we can, you know, use the shield wall and just, you know, they can't swarm us if we have their shield walls. But I mean, if you know, if they want more people who are trained to just fight one on one, you know, then. We can work on that too, but you know, Andrew's idea was well, that the more people we have in shields, thus, because they're most of these people aren't likely to stand on their own one on one against a Falkir. The first thing you've got to do is people to be able to go forward in the face of the enemy. If you've got your butters around you and you've got a dirty great big bit of wood in front, of you, it's a lot easier than somebody a spear and saying, Go on, then. Yeah, the one yeah. mentals. Yeah. Um, so, you know, same way you're training war horses on getting used to the battle, you get them used to the arms. So, it's, you know, shield wall, and then you take a command, you take another step. That sort of thing. So, just getting people trained in shield is far the best way of getting good. At least not to run away. What? One thing we could do, to Michael's point, is train a main shield wall and have, like, two mana pulls to prevent any, like, outflanking, and then those can be, like, you know, more movable groups of men. I don't know if that's a, yeah. something you guys would be interested in. I, th I think, what, you know, what you can do when you treat people, just the people who are this sort of thing, try everybody and everything they if you and full of guys who be into it and it but yeah we keep them either on commanders or um, yeah man calls ever um just just see how it sort of filters out from the people i don't know how much anyone else heard of that but like ah. i mean john's really cutting out <laughs> yeah from seeing for me i thought so, i got the gist though Oh, I'm sorry. Um, for some reason, it seems to be the, the mute level, the most cut out levels. I think that's what it, what it is. The gate, yeah. It sounds like the gate. Yeah, yeah. Let yeah. so me in, move in, my in, microphone give, closer. <laughs> give, give us the old gist again. Give us the old gist. Right. So basically, um, train everybody the same, mm -hmm. the shield wall first. And as you're training people, you start to notice who uh, get it. Don't. Mm -hmm. um, it, you've got to get everybody sort of trained in the shield wall first to get them used to fighting, used to going forward in the face of so having somebody behind them shouting at them before. Once you've got that, you out the guys who hit it, and you make them line commanders, or you make them uh, yeah, commanders, or, or have you on mm -hmm. um, Yes, <laughs> I'm basically agreeing with Alana, yes, and... That's how we. You know, that's that's how, I, how I would do it. That's a good idea. So, um, who would be training the shield wall? Then I've, I've got a feeling it might be That'd nameless, be but yeah, yeah. Um, so nameless, why don't you roll uh, 
five. So let's just say, for the sake of the argument, because being an archer is more of a finesse thing. So I'm guessing you're going to take these 44 uh, men and just say, hey, let's whack them in the shield wall, see how they do, give them a bit of discipline, then we'll see what they're specialized in, which I think was, was what Lochnia's point was. Um, yeah, and, basically, yeah. And then the ones who are more adept at being in a shield wall, you then put in a specialized unit, whilst the other guys in the shield wall are there to plug the gaps and be general guards and things like that. And, and the pe people who aren't good at that, maybe they're good at archers. So, how about you know? And they can also be just trained by you know by like Lochnir or Androcles to just you know be more mm -hmm. like just fucking one-off fighters. Exactly. Yeah. You know. Yeah. So, nameless, why don't you roll a leadership check for me and do it um, five times? It'd be great for me if you could do that. By the way, uh, Lochnir, you're coming across. Uh, your mic's coming across really well at the moment, so whatever you're doing. Oh, well, okay. Um, well, I've just moved the microphone closer. Ben, <laughs> keep moving it closer. Down your throat. That's nice way to figure. I can't. It's on my headphones. <laughs> uh, as close as I can get. You need to eat it. the entire headset and then just hope that as it goes into your body, the, head, you know, the, the headphones <laughs> just go near your ears on the inside. And then you'll oh, be able nice. to hear it perfectly. It'll be great. Let me do that's, that's exactly how it works, yeah. <laughs> yeah. You just need to make it part of yourself. One, two, three, four, doubled, plus eight. All right, so out of those men, you have 12 who are very, very, very adept at being in a shield wall. I'm talking these are elite level guys. Um, they're not flinching. They've got a lot of skill. They know how to turn a shield. They know how to respond very quickly to orders to, to turn about 90 degrees and things like that. These are guys who you're pretty certain will not balk. You know, these are these are guys who can join your shield wall immediately. So I'm guessing you want to throw them in. Um, yeah. So that's 52 men at arms you now have. Which is cool. That's 67. 67 men. Cool. So... We now have uh, 42, 32 men left who are generally, you know, l l let's see how many the roll D32. How many, how many of these guys are one? So we have one guy there who is a pretty <laughs> good, uh, pretty good. He he's okay with a shield, essentially. He's, he's not that great. He's just okay. The rest, um, I'm afraid, are not looking good. Uh, the, the, this is not a bumper crop of dudes to join your jo join your army. So there are thirty one. We'll, we'll say thirty because one of them has been injured. Because that was we rolled a one there. So, we, so we've got 30, 30 men left. These are men who can. Uh, these are men of age. They can. They can definitely fight. Uh, they're just not. They're not going to be professional soldiers anytime soon. They can definitely fight. They've not been trained to be archers yet. Um, they can work. They can. They can do whatever. But if you're not. If you don't tell them to do something, they will become a burden on your food stores, which we will go over in a minute. Um, if so they're not good do? at fighting, Arden can train them as archers. Go ahead and roll a leadership check for me. You don't have any attraction, um, I don't think. Uh, let me, I don't know. Okay, so you, if you're you not just... good at archers, they can work with Lochner or I to just, you know, bash heads in. You just roll your... Um... Or they... Okay. Or they uh, could go to um, help making arrows and stuff and other armaments. I think these guys are going to end up being bakers, I'm not going to lie. Um, roll d10 then. See how many. Four. So you get four very good archers out of this. You get very, very, very decent archers that you would trust on a wall. So, they're, 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 so it, it's not a lot, but it's more than you had. More than you had. So uh, 71 men you have all together at the moment. Uh, the rest... 26 men. Uh, fucking useless would be the words I want to use. Um, these are the dregs. Um, you've got troublemakers. You've got lazy twats. You've got people who generally... Uh, there's two of them who have been caught stealing other people's food. You know, these are the people who are looking for an easy time. Yeah, they're messing around. They're not, they're not really interested. They haven't even got the skills to be, to be fighters, you know. Um layabouts essentially some of them are not all of them some of them are just not very talented warriors you know 
Um, but yeah, it's sort of like this is the end of gym class where no one's been picked. Uh, so what are we going to do with these guys? Um, Kick the troublemakers out for a start. Mm -hmm. no is there anything they can? Yeah, anything they can actually do. I mean, you know, you're going to need people who can pour heat and pour hot oil and throw rocks mm -hmm. off the walls. Oh. Speaking of rocks, they can work at the quarry. Quarry. If if you can find quarrying stone, yes, they can. What are they going to do in the meantime? Because this has been happening over two months, remember? So this is a couple of weeks ago now. So and if, I think uh, Androcles is, is is if you know finds out they're stealing, he's going to put the fear of God into them, so to speak. Mm -hmm. He's going to beat one or two of them near senseless. Well, he, he, he's going to he, he's going to say time to spar. Give him a stick and then just you know yeah way along you know, while talking about being disciplined and taking care of you know and fighting for stuff that's important he's just going to slap him around. Cool. Um, please go ahead and roll a five might checks for me. See if you can try not to kill any of them with your overly powered left arm. One, two, three. So so. They, they they get the message. They're not going to. These guys are not going to cause any more trouble whilst they're here. So that, that was a good thing. Yeah. So, so so your impromptu training session, where you nearly cave people's skulls in for stealing food, definitely gets you um, a lot of respect. And and um, one or two of them, um, nameless. Go ahead and roll a leadership check for me. Just the one. Okay. And does that give you a reroll? Yeah. Go ahead and do a reroll for me. Nice. So, you actually, after this, you, you know sometimes people have a come to Jesus moment sort of a thing where where they, they have the lowest of the low. It often happens in the military, where when you see um, people who are troublemakers, they, they will be troublemakers until a sergeant major gets a hold of them, and then eventually they become rah, rah, yes sir, and they become amazing soldiers. Um, you pick out, from this group of 26, you pick out... Uh, two more, two more who are who are can be added to the shield wall, or even um, given swords and made as as swordsmen as, as assault assault soldiers basically. So so people not aren't in the shield wall but can actually be trained to be actually good good fighters. Um, whether you want to do that or not, or just throw them in the shield wall is up to you. Um, but you're now on seventy three men at arms, two of which are doing nothing. So what would you like to do with them? I mean, maybe what we could do is create like an elite unit then. If they're uh, super, super good. Yeah, they are very, very good. Just then, uh, yeah, you could have like a, a specialist mini unit, I guess, um, who can come in and do the the sort of hammer to the shield walls anvil. So that would be my thinking anyway. So if you ever got horses, this would be cavalrymen, we, essentially. We, we could do cavalrymen. I mean, it could just be... Like I say, people infantry, running around next to Androcles, heavy and... infantry kind of unit. Um, okay, we could could potentially do cavalry later on. Cool. So, yeah. excellent. We so, do have what, five horses. Yes, you do. I have two. Yeah, you have six yeah. horses. I thought we had one for each of us, and then two for Nameless. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Isn't that five? Oh yeah, no. Yeah. Yes. It is, yeah, five. Yeah. 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 Sorry. I, I thought. I thought I'm and counting. You, I'm counting me. Actually. I don't know why I'm counting me. Uh. <laughs> well, no. Actually, I, I stand corrected. We do have six. We have six and a donkey because we had the cart horse that was yes. pulling Dolphin's cart, no. and we have a mule. In terms of war horses, you do have five. Five. Um. <laughs> so, so the the construction works going swimmingly. Okay. Um. And now let's actually. Go over the trade, and then we'll start the the role playing part of the session, which would be about an hour. So let, let, let's just go over trade. Um, so as you can see on the Outlander Barony, we won't be doing this every week, by the way. This is just us setting everything up. And so next week, it'll take us ten minutes to go through it and see what you've got in, see what you've come out. Yeah, we'll do treasury at the start of every session, basically. So um, just going forward into the current into sessions going forward you will get quests every single week on this page that i will send to you that you can or cannot do if you want to um there will be a certain amount of action points you can take to um beef up the 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 the, the bowery and to beef up your holdings in general 
Um, there have been reports of poaching in the Grailwood, you know, as people want to test, you want, you want new guys, people want to test whether they can get away with stuff or not. Um, so, in terms of mm -hmm. trade, you have an agreement to help build Kale Bridge and Grail Cross in return for peace, you know, stone and fishing rights. So, would you like to take them up on that? And would you like to send people to get fish and stone? From Kale Bridge. Uh, at this point. I mean, that, that, that was like part of the thing with like taking the soldiers to, you know, do their endurance stuff would be, yeah, going to go collect stone and going to collect, you know, and and, and helping to fell the trees that were owing to the reconstruction and even the construction stuff. Like, you know, that's, that's I think what we're going to have our troops, what I said before, was just have our troops work and build so that this, you know, so they're not not only are they getting the strength and the endurance they need to fight and hold their own, but they're also you know rebuilding their homes. Yes. Okay. That is fine. And then we don't have to pay laborers as well. So, <laughs> the ruler of Kalebridge is Godfrey, who wasn't very well disposed to you last time, as you as you remember. He did climb down from his demands, and he did set up that trade that trading uh, agreement with you. So it was basically for you to go and help rebuild Kale Bridge and Grail Cross in return for peace, stone, and fishing rights as well. Um, so that, that's, what he's, that, that's what he's after. You haven't turned up to help him just yet. So are you going to... How are you going to do this? Are you going to send apologies and like have um, guys come to him later on after you're, you've finished rebuilding your stuff? Or are you going to send people straight away to be good guys and say, hey, look, we're helping, and then return to do your own stuff later? Because that, that, this will basically um, have an effect on the time frame of the, the repairs to the Bowery and anything that else that you want to do. My personal belief would be to, like, it's like the, the drowning man syndrome, right? Like, you should never try and save a man that is drowning. Um, if he's flailing around wildly, because if he drags you down, then you don't actually help anyone. So my argument would be to get ourselves to a position where we're strong enough to actually be able to help people if it were necessary, rather than splitting our workforce and then effectively not being able to help anyone for much, much longer. That's my argument. Perhaps then we should send someone uh, down there to say, like, give an estimate of when we think we'll start helping, just so it doesn't seem like we're just giving them the, you know, pop off. Yeah. Um, Angelis is also would suggest that we don't send them empty-handed. Like, we should get yeah. a shipment of wood to take down because that is also something we promised. You know, How much wood are you going to give them? You you have um, two hundred right now. I mean, I'd say like being a bit more generous in this first front, mm. you know, and then just cause that'll also help as we negotiate for, you know, we're getting the stone back to help us rebuild, but just to kind of, as a show of good faith, you know, give them more wood than, you know, we would normally give them. Mm -hmm. so I can't remember what we <clears throat> promised them exactly. Are you having people log the grail wood, obviously sustainably, so they're not going in there and just leveling it, but are you having people get logs from the grail wood? To help out. I, yeah, that was I. You know, I was I believe part of the plan just to, to like the, the you know, once again like that kind of that training thing is like any materials we need, I just make soldiers labor for it to help build so, up. And Andrew Place would be working with them. Yeah, so, so we're looking at around twenty laborers. We just call them laborers for now. These are the people who did dreg. So, so you're going to get fifty wood per week. So I'm going to say. You now have four hundred wood. So you've gotten quite a lot this month from from the on the wood front. How much of that are you going to give to Kalebridge? Um, I mean, how much are we looking at to just to, you know to do our immediate projects in the Bowery? Is I guess what it doesn't you know. really require any wood to do the projects in the Bowery. Um. It's mainly stone that's needed. I could overcomplicate it and say you need to do scaffolding and stuff, but that's just an overcomplication that we don't need. So, yeah. Um, but the well, wood I mean, we would need for lots of things like in Brindle to like actually get places yes. for these people to live. Yeah. Because like they'll eventually disease will start spreading if more and more people start coming to the Bowery. Yeah. So I mean, I figure if we give him, 
like, you know, to, like, if we could give him almost even like 200 wood, that's a lot of wood. That'll keep him happy for a while, you know? 200 wood isn't a lot of wood. It's a lot of wood. I, mean, I, th- I feel like we should give him, like, personally less than half. Like, not, not 200. I feel like that's too much because, like, I don't know. I just think that we, it's a little much. Maybe, like, I don't know. I mean, like, our I mean, Andrew Cleese would probably ask some of our people who are more versed in how this trade stuff works for an amount. He would just be like, we can give him, like, you know, half, I guess. I don't know. What do you guys think? <laughs> Numbers is not an Andrew Cleese strong point. Because we, we have, you know. What would be an, what's an amount that, like, isn't insulting? But is it too much? Because I think, like, 100 was probably a lot already. So, if we're looking Um, at certain... uh, He would be expecting around... Around 75 to 100 would would be a really, really good amount. But but I I think you need to get the opinions of everyone else before you... What does everyone else think? Um, I mean, I'd rather pay my debt as possible and, and get out of the way rather than uh, to ask about some new needs. Let's just get it out of the way. Agreed. I would agree with that mm. just because um, we don't need the wood for the for the immediate future because um, we're working on the Bowery rather than Brindle, etc first so i mean we can spare the wood this this month can't we so like 150 would be more than he would expect but you know enough that we can keep sending him a good amount next month as well cool yes so it's everyone okay with 150 Sure. Cool. So, so you guys send off um, a few warriors. Let, let's say uh, ten warriors. Would you, yeah, would a oh, bit should be around about right. So, so ten warriors in a shield wall, just to just to take this down there. Is anyone going with them? This is last week, by the way. So this is nothing you need to role play. Is anyone going with them? Um, I would suggest that one of the group does just for face, I guess. Um. <laughs> I mean, if it was going to be one, I'd probably send the one person who speaks his language, so to speak. You know, Lochner is more versed in, you know, all of my politics and money nonsense than any of us. Uh, a simple northern barbarian. We're all wrong. <laughs> I mean... <laughs> One that happens to no legal contracts. <laughs> <laughs> I suppose you have to know that people who are like before, right? <laughs> I mean, I mean you've, you've seen the three of us doing stuff, and, you know, words aren't our strong point. It's more, you know, shooting your friends and smashing your friends for the other three of us. So, uh... I don't think um, the three of us have ever talked anyone out of anything. So. <laughs> so. Okay, I'll go. Uh, so that that would get there, um, and you do have a a message of compliments and a shipment of fish. So this is fish that has ice packed around it. So you you have a, an extra units of food. We won't go into that right now, but it's nice that you got extra units of food. That's very good. And uh, you also have another uh, 70 stone as well. So uh, that's come in from your uh, new friend in in, uh, in uh, Kale Bridge. So you have 140 stone. So almost enough to finish the walls. Um, but let's start, let's start role-playing. We've been doing this for long enough now. So let, let, let's get into it. So um, as you guys are around the cooking pit here, just discussing these plans and, and, and what's been going on and training and things, there is a, a knock at the gate, and Shen goes to answer it. Yeah, the gates are pulled apart, and a, a man who can only look like he's just run a marathon in, in leather armor uh, staggers in, and he has the, the emblem of Kale Bridge, so it's the bridge with a crown over it over his chest. 
and he just slumps down and uh, he, he asks for water and somebody brings him some water and he says uh, uh, where, where are you where are your barons and they, they, they point over to the cook, the cook fire and he, he staggers over a few of the guards um, move nearby him just to make sure he doesn't make any moves one of them moves to disarm him but looks to nameless first I'll stop them disarming him. I'm just going to let him... Yeah, he's yeah. not going for his weapons or anything. I mean, like I said, it's one guy. I highly doubt that one guy is going to kill all four of us. So, mm -hmm. yeah. So, and then he kills all four of us. No. Um, so, so he... He explodes. He, he says, uh, we were... We were just in the in the woods hunting. We were run off by by a warrior there. We, we, we came across a hut in the woods. Uh... Went to stay there for the night. Um, we told the bitch to leave, but she wouldn't go. And then, and she she killed us. Five of us. She killed the other four. Uh, she's a poacher, I think. Poacher killed four of five men by yeah. herself. Yeah. What kind of poacher? Yeah. Or oh, what? What kind of men are you? <laughs> like <laughs> Jesus. Um, Excuse me. Well, I'm, I'm no, just going to look towards the nameless. Like each of us could take five of them single-handedly. That's you know, <laughs> that's, that's not. Let's not you know be too hard on the poor guy. As he's like, he's like, he's like panting and like barely like walking. Well, maybe I'll leave the diplomacy to you guys because I'm currently uh, judging this guy. <laughs> <laughs> so the, uh, uh, Andrew, please, just Arden's just him, and we just be like tell us again what happened don't leave out any details so we were we were hunting as you as you said we could uh, uh, Lord Godfrey told us to, to, to go hunting bring in food from the Grailwood and we were doing so we, we found a hut we went to stay there for the night there was a woman there uh, and she she sold us to leave. Um, we refused. Uh, she drew her sword, uh, so we attacked her. And uh, well, I. He said she he, he, she killed Sven very very quickly, and the rest of us were well. I I ran once the other four were down. I ran. I mean, what did, was she Falkir? What did she look like? Uh, you know, just uh, browny black hair. Uh, quite tall, quite tall. Uh, 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 huge, huge arms. Uh, broad back, you know. Um, I'd, I'd fire red, red, fiery eyes. You know, really, really, you know, uh, much bigger than me. Much bigger than me. Um, Does he you know. sound like he's he's trying to save face? Mm, you can roll a, a perception. Add six to it. Okay, hold on. Sorry. Uh. Yeah, he's bullshitting. Full on. I'm just gonna. I'm gonna. I'm gonna stand up in front of him, like, you know, kind of like tower over him, and just put a hand on his shoulder, and just kind of look him right and say, "What did she look like?" Uh, uh, basically, what I said, but smaller than me and no fire in the eyes. Um, I mean. From the story, it just sounds like you trespassed on our land, and when you wouldn't leave, she basically defended her land. That sounds like kind of trespassing on our property to me. Um, Lucius stands up, and he's always behind you, and he says, uh, in fact, my lord, if that is the uh, hut I, I, I believe he is speaking of, that is extremely close to the Bowery itself, and illegal to be poaching there. But for poaching is what it is. But we have no proof that she is poaching. Because they only saw her. But they certainly are, my in lord. The, in the hut. So we we have no guarantee that she's a poacher at all. Because but, the first what, what he's saying is that, that in the house. their troops were hunting where they shouldn't, is what I think Lucius is saying. Right? He, bow, he, he bows too extravagantly, yes. So I'm going to turn towards him and like give him like you know a very stern look like, you know, kind of explain yourself look. 
He, uh, no, 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 we, we weren't haunting like there. Pinching his no, arm no. A, like pinching his shoulder a little. No, 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 no. We, we weren't haunting there. We were there to spend the night and then go back into our half of the forest. I thought you happened to come upon the hut. Uh, and no, I'm like, uh, squeeze his shoulder a bit more, like, kind uh, of like pushing him down a little. Uh, no, 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 see, no. Uh, I misspoke. And uh, so I'm just going to kind of like squat down a little so I'm eye level with him. Yeah. And I'm just going to say, last chance, explain yourself. Uh, uh, no lies, no lies, he, no bullshit. He, he, just, he just shrugs and says, look, we, we just wanted somewhere to spend the night, all right? We were attacked, so I thought I'd come and tell you that you have a miscreant in your woods. That's all. Anything wrong, so I'm good with this. Yeah. Maybe we should send someone to check it out. I'm, Make sure just, she's I'm, okay. I'm just gonna kind of like put like <laughs> let go of the guy and kind of push him back a little and turn towards the others and just if this person can take on five soldiers and it's gonna kind of look back even if they're Calebridge, we should probably investigate it ourselves. Or at least one of us should go. Twenty foot tall with fire in their eyes. Things are getting a bit uh, tedious around here anyway. Oh, well, let's go investigate. And then I guess we'll uh, we'll send these guys, well, this man on his way. Because do you do it with like inverted commas with your fingers? It's, yeah, this man. So I'm going to turn back towards him and say, "We'll look into the matter, but if we find you, if we find your men hunting where they shouldn't, she'll be the least of your worries." There's uh, I, I understand. I understand. Yeah, we 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 definitely have support the treaty. We we don't. Godfrey's a man of his word. Trust me. And then I'm gonna just like kind of do the like do the whole like menacing walk up to him again and say, "Are you?" Uh. The, yes. Now go. He, he, he walks. He, he walks quickly out. So, what do you guys like to do? So, so we're at, we're calling that like uh, ten o'clock in the morning, something like that. No. He must have been running through the night. Just grab our stuff and go find this hut. Yeah. Um, yeah. So... I have a feeling there's going to be an invisible elf woman there. Yeah, well, we'll see. So... <laughs> um, who is leading the way into the Grailwood? Let's see. Who's leading the way into the Grailwood? Probably Arden. Uh, hopefully. Okay. <laughs> so roll uh, five uh, investigation checks for me. Um, the... What's his? Sorry, who is the, Lucius? Uh, knew about this particular hut, correct? Uh, he knows okay. of the hut. Yes, of what of that you speak of. Yes. So I imagine we'd probably have him along. You can do. I mean, he's he's not been there before, but he's heard of where it is. This 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 hut that's out there. At the very least, he can tell us what he's heard as we mm -hmm. walk. So, um, yeah, I mean, yeah, he, he'll just regale you of tales of um, um, the strapping shoulders of Nameless as he was digging holes here, and that he, he dug, like, 18 mounds of earth from the ground to bury 18 mighty heroes that he would he would go on to slay, and things like that. Yeah. Like, and he's he sing it in the, uh, in he the is. man. Of, um... he's, he has his loot out, he's singing it. Oh, that's good because I'm I'm imagining the Witcher, the annoying little bard. Yeah, pretty much. Um, so you know, toss a coin to your Witcher kind of thing. Yeah, yeah. Just, just aimed so his voice carries specifically to Androcles. Well, he when he's when he's singing, he his voice breaks. So when he goes onto the high note, he goes right up to Androcles and goes, ah! like in the in the side of his. I mean, I think I would like he's... put my hand over his mouth. As he goes into high mode, just like cover his mouth. Like, ah, I, 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 you were supposed to come for information, not for an, for irritation, <laughs> not, or not to be an irritation. That was not meant to rhyme. I say, if you'd like to keep that, and he's going to gesture towards the loot. 
I he, suggest he, you you talk in a more conversational tone. He wand he wanders off singing a song of the uh uh the, 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 the lack of artistic merit that Androcles has in his in his heart and, and the, the 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 lack of perception he has for realizing real talent. Yikes. <laughs> he's he's fishing for more coins basically is what he's doing um so Arden, you you do come across the uh you, you, you I'm, I'm assuming you're going straight to your family home that's what i'm assuming you're doing you're going straight to that yes okay um so I'll oh well, well we'll kind of like but not like just like make an obvious beeline so we're like crashing through the woods like we're here yeah like so who's going forward first? And are you going to head forward on your own, or are you going to actually, you know, all well, go together? Arden, well, yeah, she'll pull. Um, uh, she'll be holding like an arrow at in the bow, like at the ready, as she kind of starts stepping forward, cautiously okay. though. Okay. So. And anyway, if she pulls out her bow. Androcles will have his axes at the ready. Okay. So, are you heading in? Yeah. Um, first, uh, Arden's going to walk around the perimeter. Okay. So you, you, you see no traps at the moment. Um, you see nothing around that can really be perceived as anything that can actually be a threat to you. Um, you do see the bodies in the clearing where the house is of the four. Uh, there are four men in the same surcoats as the man who came to your, to your keep. They're all piled on top of each other, um, just to the side. And, and there are flies around them. Buzzing around them. Is she'll be looking for signs of life then in the cottage to see if like there's anyone in there? Uh, there is actually someone sitting on the steps of the cottage and she's sh uh, sharpening a blade like a sword with a whetstone. And she says, um, and I guess some. She just says, you may as well step out. Now, Arden, at this point, you know you shouldn't be able to be seen. You're like 30 feet away, you're in the bushes, you know, you've done this a million times, and she shouldn't be able to see you. At this point, Arden um, is just going to step forward and okay. motion for the others, too. Cool. So, this woman, um, you recognize her almost immediately as the woman who spared your life at the, at the, the tournament last time around. And uh, she hasn't even looked at you, but she, she's sort of like sniffing the air. And she says, um, she, she like nods as if she's tasting a fine vintage of wine and says, uh, okay, in body oil. I know it anywhere. And like, and there's, that goes back to like sharpening her, sharpening her, uh, her blade and says, I uh, see you brought your strapping friends with you. Uh, champion. Oh, we heard a Lost in. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> And she, she looks up at you. Um, and she looks up at you. Look, uh, looks up at you, nameless, and says, "If I wanted to be in the grand final, my friend, you would not be standing there making that boast right now." And she she blows like a uh, bit of dust from the blade as she goes back to working it. I'm a little bit stronger than the four men you dispatched uh, last night. Thank you. And I'll just turn and wander off. She 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 shakes her head and says. Uh, speaking of that tournament and your presence here, what what was that about? Why didn't you go for that final blow? And yeah, why are you here? She she looks at you and says, uh, "I was curious to see what you would do if I let you live, well, or or if you would win the tournament without me being there." Thanks for that. I guess shrugs for letting me live. Um, still don't get why you're here. She just looks around and says, why wouldn't I be? This is my home. Awkward. Arden, at this point, is just going to be pulling her arrow up and just go, one more time. Okay. Why are you here? Okay, so she says, um, go ahead and loose the shaft. 
Arden's gonna just look really confused. And... Go ahead. Okay, she'll do it. Okay. So, GM roll time. And she rolls the one and dies. <laughs> Immediately shot in the face. Um, that's a 19 plus... That would be kind of amazing. 12. So, um, so as you loose the arrow, she doesn't even get up, but she strikes out the air with the sword that she's that she's sharpening, and then looks at the blade and goes, "Ah, still sharp, good." And she slides it, slides it clear, uh, into the scabbard, and stands up and like pats herself down, and she walks over to where the two graves are, and she says, uh, "This is where your money is, correct? Yes." I'll just kind of look over at Nameless and go, well, it was supposed well, to be on the other side of the tree. Yeah, technically it's not there because uh, I, I did rebury the, uh, the the dead invisible elf woman's uh, grave. So, yeah. Are you it, saying that it, out loud? No, no. Okay, cool. Because like, I've wandered off, haven't I? Yeah, yeah. So, um, yeah, he says, my, my people said that you were digging and putting boxes down here or chests or something. She looks around. Says, um, "As soon as I heard that, I figured you'd come looking. Didn't think you'd come all the way over to the to Bal to Baldur's Bay, though." And then she she shrugs and says, um, "And she she looks down at the she looks down at the the other grave there, and she has a a look of absolute like profound sadness over her face, like just for a second, not for long." Just for just for a second, has a yeah. You know, I look at deep reflection there. Hendrik is going to like back up to to Oak. <laughs> and, and is going to back up to Lochnir and just be like, "Do you know what's going on?" Uh, shrug. I have no idea. He's fit though. I would. And and she's gonna kind of like mumble back, like, "Don't let Flissa hear that. She might, you know, make you pay." Oh, we uh, we have a, a very broad relationship. I think she'll see with the broad side of her hand. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, yeah. So, so she's not saying anything else. She's just looking at the grave at this moment in time. She's just lost in thought for a minute. Arnon's starting to kind of put two and two together, but at the same time, it makes no sense. Because, like, how young does this woman look? Um, she looks about 15, 20 years older than you. So, you know. Um, all burny hair. You know, very athletic build. Um, obviously, he's been through the wars. I think Sarah Connor. I think Sarah Connor from the original. But from, she's, uh, not, she's not an elf, though, is she? She is an elf, yeah. Oh, she is. Mm -hmm. I thought she was a falcon. <laughs> Sorry, this whole time. <laughs> but Art is going to kind of put two and two together and go, um, well, Mom. didn't go all the way there looking for you, if that's what you meant. Um, still not 100% sure who you are. And she, she, she shrugs and says, I really hope he didn't bring you up to be this dim or that you're... I really hope you're looking for a play here and rather than being, you know, this. And that, Arden's going to shoot an arrow, like, straight at her for saying that about her dad. Okay. Let's see this again. Uh, Ooh. Ooh. This time, this time, <laughs> the arrow strikes true, like, right into her shoulder. And she grunts and looks down. And there's there's blood welling there. And she goes and she goes to like step forward and, and says, uh, that's the last free one you're going to get. You you better put the bow down. If it is you, why did you why did um why was there this grave here my whole life? Like why were you off in the Falcon Kingdoms? It make, doesn't make any sense. She's, why should I believe you? She says, I, I made him promise not to not to tell you where I had gone. We argued, we fought, and I thought it best that I leave. 
He was never a warrior. And he was always just a, a woodsman. He was a ranger. He was, you know, he was who he was, and I was, I am who I am. I'm a fighter. Then why even, why even bother showing up now? Clearly, you weren't needed. Because, hearken something beyond dangerous, and you have foolishly gotten yourself tied up in opposing him. And if, is, if it is a choice between my king and my daughter, I'm afraid you're the only piece of blood that I have left on this earth, and I'm not about to let him take you away from me, even though I took, I took you, I took me away from you for all these years. I can only apologize. And she heaves out the arrow and turns it around. I sort of nods like, like she's thinking, eh, that was pretty decent. She throws it back to you. Arden just leaves it where it is. She's not really having any of this. Because, like, if this is her mom, like, oh, you abandoned me all those years ago, wanted us to think that uh, you were dead, or wanted me to think that you were dead, it's like, why should I give a fuck about you now? Okay. So, she says, um, you can either leave me here, or you can kill me, or you can take me back to Rundown keep of yours. So, if if because I'm assuming I'm going to be in the earshot of this, can I uh, wander back and say <laughs> we should bring her along? She can turn invisible. <laughs> <laughs> <That's good. laughs> she looks at you like you like you've grown another head. She she says, "Um, is he all right?" Uh, I've just seen a ghost. That's all. <laughs> <laughs> is Lochnir responding to any of this? Because Andrew is just kind of like looking at Lochnir like, what the fuck is happening? I, I, I'm getting my nails with a broadsword. This has nothing to do with me. Admiring uh, Arden's mum. <laughs> <laughs> Apart from admiring Arden's mum. <laughs> <laughs> the most important part of this conversation, of course. Milfstrid. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, was she called Raven Hair and she had red hair? Uh, she, yeah, but it, it's Raven Hair isn't the black, it's wavy. It's extremely wavy. Mm -hmm. So it's. it's uh, Raven Auburn usually does mean dark hair, though. Just saying. Oh, right, a Raven Hair to me is like really wavy and really wild. Really wild hair. Raven hair. Oh, so not actually Raven Haired? No. <laughs> Same color hair as you. <laughs> so more like Brave. I was gonna call us. I'm gonna. I'm gonna call a storm hair, but it, it doesn't really work. No, I did raven hair. Anyway, um, it could. It, it could be an ironic thing. Maybe. Is always up maybe. There, ironic. And... Yeah, like when mobsters call someone tiny, but he's actually like obese. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Maybe, yep. Like it, it, she calls herself raven hair, so that when people come and looking for her, they see a woman with red hair, and she's like, "That ain't her." And then she <laughs> exactly. <them. laughs> they, they, they turn around, and she just stabs them. Uh, gotcha, bitch. <laughs> she, she just shrugs and says you can either make a decision I mean I, I'm I'm not leaving from now on I, I can watch you from here Arden's um kind of conflicted because it's like mom but it's also like person who abandoned me so she's just gonna say you can do whatever you want that clearly hasn't stopped you before but um she just nods and says, we're leaving she nods and says true all right I'll follow behind Arnon's just when she turns around, she's not going to look back. Uh, she, uh, she, she looks over. To, she looks over to you, and uh, she looks over to you, uh, 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 Lochnir, and says, um, um, "Strapping lad over there." And like points to you and says, uh, "Are you uh, a ranger or something? Are you? You're the only one who's got probably the least clothes on of all the people here." Be clothed. Mm, yeah. oh, he, well, he, he has like on. robes on, but uh, clothing, but no armor or anything. Just. Um. Yeah. What about me? Yeah. A dude. Just a dude. She, she she nods and says there are uh, other rangers in these woods who are trying very hard not to be seen, and none of them are wearing your colors. Since my daughter mm. is no longer speaking to me, 
she's having one of those <laughs> teenager moments that I've been hearing so much about over the years that I thought I'd missed, but apparently not. I give this information to you to do what you will with. Uh, there are around 20 men in these forests hunting and not very well. But they're, they're, they're butchering deer, elks, all sorts. So, yeah, is Treating your daughter like a, a teenage girl. She's anything but. Mm. You're a mother and you've been away for years. She, you can't she, call her names like that. No wonder, no wonder she's stormed off on a half. <laughs> she, she shrugs and just says, um, all evidence to the contrary. I, I lost my mother when I was four. Really left you because you're such a bitch. Yeah. <laughs> she, she, she shrugs and nods and says, yeah. perhaps, yeah. Oh, fucked up, lady. Um, what are you doing tonight? <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> he says, um, she, she, she says, uh, um, oh, hopefully having a drink with, uh, you know, new friends. She smiles like with it, like a shit eating grin. It's like, uh, all right, tell me about these. Yeah, we'll see about that. Tell me about these, uh, these badly hiding. This, uh, what are they wearing? Where are they hiding? How many are they? Uh, she, she, she walks over to the bodies and just like boots them and says, Yeah, like these all around. There's, there's a few about 20 yards away, actually. She looks over to where they are, and you hear like an explosion in the, uh, of movement in the bushes as they're obviously running away. Androcles, um, uh, I think Androcles will like is gonna is gonna you know put the fear of God into these ones too. No, they're they're running, man. They're, like, they they can't even see you anymore. They're 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 gone. Oh. They're bolted. Oh, <laughs> look at me, fear me! That's, that's the, that's oh, like, gone. We need, gone. Of, uh, we need oh, to get them, them, keep them in their side of the woods, or I'm gonna have to start. I want to. I want to. I want to peg it after them. Okay, cool. Uh, roll a speed check for me. I guess I will follow. Yeah, well, I guess we'll both fucking go. Both roll speed yeah. checks for me. Oh 19. shit! Nineteen. Oh, wow. <laughs> Jesus. Okay. <laughs> all very well. <laughs> Okay. Well, so, so all you need to do to get Rockley to roll well is just um, give him essence of milf, and he'll just <laughs> go away again. So, 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 Androcles bounds to go, and Lochnir is a blur, and just speeds past him, just just gone. And uh, you tackle both of these guys to the floor. You, they're, they're they're just getting away from you, and one of them stops. Because um, he knows he, he can't outrun you. you. You grab him, and as you grab him, your momentum slams into the other one as well. So you get them both on the floor. And she, and uh, yeah, they're, they're, they're wriggling around. But like with the, with a 20, I'm going to let you do whatever you want. So, so what would you like to do? Um, I want to knock their heads together and uh, drag them off. Just by uh, the ankles. To... Yeah. <laughs> Asterix, Romans aren't playing anymore. Yeah, um, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Basically, sort of dra drag them back by the scuffs of their necks and uh, uh, and let Nameless interrogate them. As you walk past, um, as you walk past Astrid, she taps you on the shoulder and goes, "Nicely done." Andrew, please, just kind of like, 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 is like looking at Lockyer, then looking at like himself and his like his legs. It's like that's really fast. <laughs> just confused. <laughs> He's impressed, but he's too confused to realize how impressed he is. He even like, rolls like Fafid. It's ridiculous. <laughs> um, so, Nameless, what would you like to do? You, you've been called for interruption. So I'd threateningly ask them what they're doing here. Uh, one of them is unconscious. Uh, the other one says, uh, "We're just uh, we were scouting to see to see where we could get more elk." Uh, yeah, apologies. Uh, we didn't realize we'd come so far. Um, but we've had reports that there are more of you. Ah, uh, is that? I, I, that's the first I've heard of it. Is it? And then I'll walk one step towards him. Um, yes. Maybe to their friends. It seems to be in a bloody heap just around the corner. Uh, yeah, you can, you can oh. actually direct their gaze there if you want. Um, <laughs> so, go ahead and roll a... In fact, Ooh. what I'm going to do... 
I'm going to go over to the, to the bodies. Yeah. I'm going to tear heads off their corpses with my bare hand <laughs> and chuck them in front of him. He says, he just looks and says, "You, you you're all monsters. What did you do this for?" And and uh, I mean, Astrid just puts a hand up and says, "Well, I did that. They they disturbed my rest." They disturbed our elk. Nobody wants a disturbed elk, I can tell you. So, yeah, you were saying that you didn't know anyone else was in the woods. I, 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 I didn't know these these lot were in the woods. We just came in. Look, we're not even... We're not even... We're not even hunters. We don't know how to do this. You know, the Lord told us to go and, and hunt as much as we could. And so that's what we've been doing. See, and who is your Lord? Godfrey, you know, he, he, I've got my circle on. There's no secret. Awesome. Okay. Um, so, how about we take a little souvenir from them and uh, send him on his way? So maybe like lop off his hand? No, 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 no. Oh, look, look, look. I, I didn't, I didn't do anything. Like, I haven't even hunted anything yet. Listen, we. we I just... mean, you're here. And you were going to. Uh, yeah, yeah. And this would be ample warning for the rest of your kind. Well, what about the heads? Can't you send the heads? And he like points over to the, to the, people on the floor there. Oh, I'm going to send the heads. They're going to be strapped to you. Oh, well, uh, all right, they're fine, fine. But no need to cut my hand off or anything. Yeah, yeah I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm just. I'll, gonna I'll, 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 I'll say to nameless before we do that. I'll say to you, Cal tie his hands up if he has no hands. <laughs> oh, you good know, point. Just <laughs> so yeah, I'll cut off both his hands. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so so he 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 begins screaming, and as you turn to look at Astrid, that she's gone, like she just she she is the night, and she she's just disappeared. Oh, she is the night in the middle of the day. She she's become invisible. <laughs> There's just one dark spot in the woods. It's like in which case, I'll just look at Arden and say, "Oh, she's disappeared again." <laughs> Staring in horror, just staring in horror at the bloodbath in front of us. Did Arden come back? I thought you walked off. I was about to say you've got three idiots alone in the woods. So, 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 what's happened here is that we had a touching reunion scene, or not so much. And then that has then devolved into the screaming pain Can and agony <laughs> of a man's ruined life as the three blokes just stand around just eating an apple. It's like, oh, hurry up, you know, that sort of thing. So, yeah. so, so, uh, screaming, I'll tell him to uh, shut up and stop squirming and, uh, and tie the heads around him okay. in a manner that he won't be able to loosen them before he gets back. Okay. Uh, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna just kind of mention that the name was, uh, we might want to bind his wounds or he'll probably bleed out before he gets there. Okay, I will half gonna... bind his wounds. <laughs> <laughs> so he's very weak when he gets back. Arden is gonna walk over and rip some, like, a strip of fabric off of one of the dead people to tie up these wounds a little more and say, uh, listen, we don't want to exactly start a war with our neighbor to the south. Just after we've gained this baron, he, 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 maybe we release the heads. Maybe we just—he's shaking and says, uh, uh, "He'll, he'll see this and he'll come for you, all of you. He'll see this, and we'll be back here again, and I'll be burning this forest instead of taking some fowls out of There's there." There's two guards, right? Let's turn to the other guard. I, I, I just turn to the other guard. Oh, he's sleeping so, soundly. Unconscious. He's unconscious. He's unconscious. Ah. So I, I'm just going to turn to the others and say, you know. Maybe maybe we got off to the wrong start with this guy. Maybe we um we talk we, to the other guy and uh Well and get rid of this one. <laughs> maybe we could bury him in the uh the grave we now know is empty. All I can say is what are, with this other guy, let's not start removing body parts. We don't need to deal with that right now. That's fair. And then I'm gonna to turn towards the guy that is is now covered in heads mm -hmm. and see how he reacts to this. Suggestion. He's just broken. He he said his piece. Arden's like looking at that like... guy, and she's feeling kind of bad about his situation. Like, oh. 
So just just for yeah, the just for the sake of the role play, um, Arden, the screams okay. brought you back. I'm guessing. <laughs> what? Just for the sake of the role play, because you right. walked off. I'm I'm thinking the screams brought you back instead of the. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Okay. So we're we're not three idiots lost in the woods now, which is which is nice. Cause I'm not gonna lie, I was a little concerned that we'd never make it back. So was I. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the campaign ends with just Arden and her mother just like you know. Yeah. So uh. Yeah. Are they coming back? What are we going to do with these guys? Because we, we can't send him back with no hands and a bunch of heads strapped to his body. That's not going to go over well. So what you're well, saying is you want me to kill him? I think we need a do-over. Uh, I, th- I think we need a do-over on a gesture or to the unconscious guy. Because this, this, I think yeah, we, I... May, we may have overdone it. A little bit. <laughs> You can't put his hands back on, though, can you? I mean, you know. I mean, we can. We can strap them back to his arms. That's 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 really. Oh, wait, wait. Right, guys, <laughs> let's just let, put this one out of his misery. Wake up the like, bury him, and then wake up the other one and send him back with a message. I'll, I'll kick him. Oh. Kick the uh, the one with no hands. We'll call him armless from now on. Mm. Um, so I'll, I'll I'll kick him in the boot and say, "How do you feel about that idea?" He says, I don't, care. I don't care anymore. Just do what you're going to do. Cheer up, miserable. Oh, I don't like this. This feels like murder. I we're putting him out of his misery, it's a mercy killing. And then at that, Androcles is just going to just take his, you know, I, his cheap axe and just decapitate the dude. Cool. cool. So he is now dead. The other guy, as, as, uh, the other guy the stirs. Way. And looks You've over. Ruined my handwork. The other guy stirs and looks over and says, "Uh, handiwork." And, sa- and says, "Uh, Rolf, what do? You- what have you? T- Why has he got uh, no hands?" He he had an accident. There was a really big elk. <laughs> what? Look, I'm gonna. I'm Antiquis is gonna kind of you know, like kind of go between the two of them and like kind of squat so he can't really see the, his friend so much. It's like. And just kind of like, kind of, you know, below the ground, just looking in the eyes and say, "We need to talk." Okay, let let, to... let 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 let's. That's a good way to cut away from the scene. I like that. that, that so, so 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 you send him back with a message not to poach again, in the uh, in the in the in the great, or, or or at least not this far in. The Grail would. Anyway. Yeah, they have, well, they know how much they're supposed to take, and they know where they're supposed to take it from. They're obviously not following those standards, since he told them to hunt as much as they could. Mm-hmm. So and the message is going to be more. We had a treaty. Mm-hmm. If you don't plan on abiding by it, then cut off your hands and. Uh... Well, <laughs> no more <laughs> hands. We can't handle all this limb removal. All right. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe I'll toss one of the hands to Androcles and say, "Do you fancy a snack?" Are you eating one? <laughs> no, <laughs> no, I'm not. <laughs> Are you gone off of it? You've gone. I'm, off I'm, I'm done with that apparently. So but, yeah. I, I didn't but, uh, say I didn't say anything. You you did it yourself. I gave you the choice. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. I mean, Androcles has, has basically been raised on eating people, so it's not. Yeah. He, he doesn't actually know any other way. That's right. So, so you yeah. can numb What's on he... that hand. What's up? Oh, I said. Uh, oh, I just. This is like out of curiosity, like into Androcles' backstory. Um. Because you know how he was raised in the Falkir kingdoms. Did they know that he was eating people? They well, that's the thing is, it, they kind of wanted him to be stronger and deadlier, so they didn't really give him much of a choice. Basically, oh. from the time he was old enough to eat people, like to eat solid food, <laughs> they were fe- they were feeding him. You know, they didn't necessarily tell him what they were just doing when he was younger. <laughs> I knew, I knew you thought I knew you thought your mother was bad. <laughs> They basically yeah. just him eat, and, you know, and he didn't know what he was eating, and he just knew that if he tried to eat what literally anyone else was eating, he Those would immediately not throw up. Oh, the setting's so fucked. So to God, why did I, why did I write this? Okay, <laughs> so you gave me a really dark setting. You know I know, I, mean? I know, I know. Sorry. I mean, it's not much better than resin. No, he's, he's resin was less of a cannibal, to be fair. But anyway, um, he was so, a human. So we'll head back to the Bowery. Um, when you're at the Bowery, your your scouts have returned. 
Um, you sent about ten out, and two of them have returned. One of which is Bjorn, who's like, who's like, uh, he's got his, his arm on the shoulder of another guy who's like hanging his head near the cooking cooking pit. And um, as you get in, Arden, like he he nods to you and then nods to to Astrid, who is standing nearby, and um, he he says, uh, she says uh, she's a relative of yours. Uh, don't ask. I'm not dealing with it now. What did you guys find? Um, we were attacked up there. I'm afraid to say we lost everyone, but well, him. Um, far Who too many of them you? for us. Uh, mercenaries, black leather armor. Um, I don't know. I I've heard of a group called the Coterie who's been doing um, uh, deals across the mountains. You know, um, artifacts, things like that. Stolen goods over the mountains into Camelot, into the Thane Law. So uh, maybe we be crossed into their territory by accident. But I need to. I want to take a few men up there and answer that with a with a a rebuttal of our own. Arden nods. So we're cutting yeah. off more hands. Yeah, <laughs> nameless says That's as he walks out of the conversation. <laughs> he says, "Cutting off more hands? What? Don't just just." Don't ask. There, a lot happened in this trip. I, I, I'm pretty sure we're like we're like Nameless and I are actually like covered in blood, aren't we? A little bit. Yes. Um. Um. The, the lad <laughs> who you Nameless. brought from the from uh, from uh, Baldur's Bay is also at the cooking fire, and he sees you covered in blood, and his eyes are just like wide, and he's just he looks pretty scared. And uh, Bj Bj Bjorn, Bjorn says, um, Bjorn says, uh, the lad's been uh, helping out Gorthin today. Only lad. And uh, and the, the the boy just nods normally like, uh huh. Actually, Dean, I was gonna I was gonna ask you I was gonna send you a message about it later, but I just wanted to talk about how Andrews was dealing with the kid. I think mostly he my idea was mostly for him to kind of pawn him off on Gotham to oh there you go to to, to to just to like give him so, like someone that can keep an eye on him mm -hmm. until he's old enough to you know learn to plan for himself, so to speak. Yeah, you sure. Know, he, he's going to take care of him and teach him to fight and you know keep him here. But Andrew has no idea how to deal with this. Have you spoken to him before now? Yeah, he would. I mean, he's he's. I've spoken to him not at length, really. Mm -hmm. He's kind of like you know, there's a lot's been happening, but he's mm -hmm. you know he's trying to take care of him in the way you know the best he can, which you know is mostly you know just seeing that he gets everything he needs. Mm -hmm. And, you know, if he wants to ask any questions, which I feel like he probably hasn't asked many. Yeah, no, he, he hasn't really spoken much at all. Um, in fact, you've not actually heard him speak in two months. So an, either he doesn't have a voice or he's refusing to speak to people. He learns very quickly. He learns by doing. So, so um, everything Gawthin's, the report you've had from Gawthin is everything he's been shown, he can repeat and pretty much do within, like, a couple of minutes. Um, apart from magical stuff, this guy has... Uh, has uh, no storm blood as you can see, but Gawthin does think that he has some serious talent locked away in there. That, but he has a few walls barring him from, from getting to them. He's offered to burn the child for you, which would then um, open up those um, avenues of of, uh, of a connection to magic. Um, Andrew please wouldn't want doesn't want that for him okay. until, at the very least, he knows more about his own mm -hmm. power. Which is yeah. Mm -hmm. Um, but I think he, he he would like, you know, he, how old was he again? He's around nine. He's around nine. So, I mean, if he wants to learn to, you know, he would offer to let him, he wants to learn to fend for himself, so he would offer to let him, to teach him to fight. Mm -hmm. I don't know how he would take that. But it would just kind of be like, you know, he's, he doesn't know how to, you know, not keep his distance, but he wants to take care of him as best he can, because... He, he would, he know, would accept an offer of training. Um, yeah. But he would only do so by nodding. He doesn't, doesn't say anything. He just he just nods. Just, yeah. yeah. So I I would have been spent some time over the last, you know, um, I think it, when uh, Androcles would have wanted to train more of his magic, but I think first he wants he you know instead of doing that he would be more taking care of his kid as mm -hmm. much as he knows how. So, uh, and to Arden's question, have you told him that you're related yet? Um. I don't, in, in, unless he like, you know, expresses some sort of interest in 
figure out who I am. I don't think Andrew Cleese would have volunteered that yet because it's it's really mm. like he's not sure how he feels about it yet, you know? Yeah. He's, so, he's, run away, he's run away from that part of his life. So... Entirely. Yeah, so, so... so You've got a lot in common with Arden's mum. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Except, you know, I didn't have a kid when I left. And, you know, you were a slave. Ish. And I was a slave, ish. Um, so, all right. So, um, Astrid uh, walks over to, and she's, and that night, um, there's a common room here where you guys have set up an impromptu bar. Um, so you yeah, know, drinking mm -hmm. spirits and stuff, and Astrid is in there talking to Flissy, and she just nods and, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I assume, oh, Rockney, no. you're going to head there at the earliest opportunity. And, uh, Absolutely. I'm so sorry. Sorry, someone popped in. Can you repeat that? I'm sorry. Oh, it's okay. No, Astrid is in the in the bar area over here with Flissy and, and certain others. And um, she she looks over to you as you come in, Lockney, and she stands up and says, uh, "No, I was gonna, you know, I'm, I'm cost you both for a bit of fun upstairs, but it seems to me that you're going to be a father." <laughs> she slaps you you on the shoulder and walks past. Good luck with that. And uh, steps past you into the night air. <laughs> Awkward. <laughs> you just got cock blocked. <laughs> <laughs> I also got told I'm a father. Um, um, Felicity looks yeah. very like uh, that wasn't supposed to happen. Like like, like uh, a look of that is on her face. And um, imagine I, I, telling a complete stranger uh, that you've just met in the bar, but not uh, your other half. <laughs> yep. She, she may have That's very wrong. she may have very 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 persuasive skills. I don't know. You never know. Um, Andrew Cleese is going to kind of go up to uh, to Arden and is like, do you know what's going on? <laughs> it's like, Andrew Cleese has been left out of the loop on everything that's happening. <laughs> <laughs> Arden's just going to go, uh, yeah, best, uh, best leave it between the two of them. I'm going to uh, order a round of drinks and uh, shout congratulations to Lochnir. <laughs> um, he's, he's, he's not watching move from the spot yet. He's just <laughs> he's just frozen in place in the bar, and like you know, he's taking his hand and put a drink into it. Yeah, yeah. He's not, like, yeah. Everyone... <laughs> um, Flitty's like, I, I think you better sit down. I think it's a bit late for that, love. Uh, yeah, I suppose so. Oh, great! I'm gonna be a dad. Awesome. Really. Yeah, she I'm says. Involved. Um. He says, I'm, I'm going to keep drinking if it's all the same to you. And like, then takes a swig of ale. Um, if you're pregnant. <laughs> no. Nope. Well, back, back then, would they even know? Um, no, they wouldn't back know. Back then, this is fantasy, so. Yeah, I, I mean, I don't think uh, people, you know. Okay, so it's, it's got to be stout. She's got to drink. Oh, yeah, yeah. it is, yeah. yeah. It's, it's my old yeah. ale. It's not like, you know, it's not like fucking. Liquor. Yeah, black assassin or anything. It's just, uh. So. A little reference there. Um, so, yeah. So, yeah. We'll leave that there. You guys, you guys have a talk. Um, Thanks for that. But, uh, but, uh, yeah. Outside, um, you see Astrid just like walking around and and taking in things. And uh, Bjorn is standing next to you, Arden, and he says, uh, "Are you all right?" Honestly. Not quite sure. Um, yeah. Is she all right? I don't know, and I don't really think I care right now. Huh. Do you mind if I care? Oh. Uh, no. I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. He, he, he goes and gets you an ale. He says, I think Lochnia wanted to care, though, and then gives you an ale. Yeah, I think he did, but um, I have a feeling he's going to be uh, a little occupied for the next few months. Yeah, he, he shrugs and goes, no, knock me, he'll probably use the baby as some sort of spear. I don't know. <laughs> Windmilling a baby. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Time for you to learn to fight, son. It's like, it's to, like swinging around. Or more likely a new pickup trick. <laughs> yeah. So, um, That's um, true, it works. Um... So he, he so he says, so he, uh, am I heading back out into the mountains tomorrow? 
I'm itching to get back out there. Um, we found a quarry, by the way. And he, 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 he links you in, Lochnia. We found a quarry, but they, hmm. I, I think they, they, I think that's where they were coming from. To be honest with you, so. Well, well, who we're coming in our lands. From. Sorry, one person at a time. So, sorry, who, who was coming from the quarry? Oh, right, yeah. Um, I went up there with a few scouts a few weeks ago, as you know. Ten of us. Um, two of us came back, uh, attacked by at least 30 men, all wearing black. Um, not not mystical assassin types, don't worry about that. Just just normal, normal blokes in leather armor, but too many for us. So, came back here. Uh, but we think it's smugglers. You didn't think to tell me you got back? Well... He you, literally had just gotten back when we got back. Yeah, he I, did I, tell us. I, 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 oh, okay, okay. Yeah. So when, when he said two weeks ago. Yeah, he, so. he did tell us. Yeah, he and literally we just arrived, and that was what we came right, into right. when it was him standing next to the cook fire. Yeah, okay. Sorry, dude. missed that bit. And I was going to tell you Sorry. now, but it looks like you got a bit on your mind, so. Oh, yeah. no, this is important. All right. Is the uh, quarry in our land? It's it's up, it's up in the mountains, so yeah, you, we we could probably do you know, say it's in your land, yeah. You need to get rid of them first. I'm up for that if you guys are. Arnon's ready to shoot some arrows at someone to get out some of her rage. Yeah, and please, and please will nod and you know he is he is it is getting a little noisy in the bar for him, especially since he doesn't actually drink. Yeah. So he will. He will step out. He's actually going to go see if he can find the kid. At this point, his, okay. This whole father. This whole fatherhood talk is getting a little weird for him. So. Cool. So, uh, are you gonna are you gonna find him for any reason, or is it just to no, check just on him? Just to kind of check on him. Yeah. You know. He's fine. Like 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 Gothin showing him, uh, like like Gothin set, like setting fire to the wall and is making like. A massive cock and balls in the wall out of like scorched stone, <laughs> and the kid just laughing as uh, you know. Um, I think we should keep that there. Yeah. Andrew, that should, well, uh, uh, can, <laughs> can Andrew please try to draw with his icy fart like arm? Oh, his icy fart. His icy fart. <laughs> 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 his, his ice cold uh, appendage. <laughs> probably, probably not. No, it doesn't work that way. Like just even just like put a bit of frost on the wall. Just kind of. Projectile frosting, no. Oh, no, no, I mean, no. Like you go up and like put his Out hand the on the wall. The... And... Oh it's kind of like when you when, when, when you. No, it's like when you blow on the when you like blow on a window and then draw like you know like for the condensation, then you draw on that. Mm. It's more what I was thinking. Ah, uh, no, um, like like. <laughs> I don't it, know how frosty his arm. It, it, it's more internal. You, you're not a wizard. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. So, um, your all the strength in this arm that runs throughout your body is more like powering your your muscles and your your reflexes. Um, okay. Doesn't really, you know, I, I can only really be used in in anger. If you know what I'm saying. So, if you're in a combat situation, wouldn't really yeah. work for this. Uh, you're not really that oh. controllable. It's more of a burst of like "fuck you," like you know, rather than just "ah, there's right. a cock and balls on the wall." You know, that sort of thing. It doesn't really work that way. Right. No, I got that. That, that I, just, I just didn't know, so that now I know. Um, well, he just kind of, you know, probably bring the, ki the kids some food and just sit with him while he watches. Mm. He, he like points him. over, he points over at the uh, thing and the, and the first time you ever heard him speak, he says, uh, Gawthin do cock and balls. <laughs> and and Gawthin just nods and goes, all right. Are we all in like earshot of this, or is no? You guys are away? inside. You guys are inside. Okay. And uh, yeah. otherwise, there'd be some serious mockery going on. Gawthin just nods and says, uh, "All right, almost as big as mine." And I smiles like with no teeth. Just... A nine-year-old kid. <laughs> like that Games Workshop story again. <laughs> <laughs> and Andrew goes to shake his head, but kind of like in a mirthful way, and he says. Yes, Gotham did. Yes, Gotham did. So, yeah, he, he just sits down, and starts eating. And he's just gonna, yeah, you know, just kind of. He, 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 I think he's just gonna kind of let that lie, you know. Mm -hmm. The kid's calming down. The kid's talking. So, 
You're just gonna kind of let him be comfortable. Cool. Well, we can we can we can stop the the the, the night there and move on to next morning if you wish. We can we can do that pretty easy. If no one else has anything to do. If no one else has anything to do, um, no. we should we should be end, ending in around half an hour, forty five minutes, something like. That. If anyone needs to hurry off, no problem. Um, mm -hmm. But uh, yeah, there should be around about then. Um, so next morning. So the the are you taking any scouts with you, or is it just the Outlanders who are going up into the into the mountains to, to sort this out? There are I mean, lots of guys. We should bring some men with us. I mean, a, a few of our more you know tested men, because we're going to be on come in mountains and stuff. It's not like a field for a shield wall. Mm -hmm. you know? Except you have few. 30 men, which isn't yeah. a small amount. So I think mostly like a few men and some archers would probably be a better thing. We don't want to have... The, we, we don't want to try to come up with... You know... Um, we probably don't want to come up with like 50 dudes. We want to mm -hmm. be more mobile since we are climbing up to them. So for, and let's have a look at our agents. On the on the Outlander Barony page, so 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 what agents have we got here that you would like to bring with you? Bjorn definitely, because he wants to. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um. I think we'd need a few, you know, just a few general archers as well. But sorry, I'm getting the document back open. Oh, right, it was already there. Um, do we, I mean, you know, I don't really think we know, know that we need any of the specific captains to come with us, aside from Bjorn, who's been there, and, you know, and then the four of us, and probably, like, I don't know, a half dozen to a dozen men, like, a few fighters and a few archers. Yeah, that sounds good. Be like four of each or five of each. Just kind of like so that we can we can try to like, you know, do our best to come up on them a little um, more. You know, um, try to try to avoid like getting trapped by them if we because if we're moving with a large contingent. We have to follow whatever paths are available. Mm -hmm. we can't really go anywhere else. The Ninja Police doesn't like, you know, walking straight up the main road right up into whoever wants to kill him. Does um, that plan sound good with everyone else? Sounds good to me. To me. So who are we taking with us from the, just to finalize things? What, like us, Bjorn, mm -hmm. five archers, and... Five just jet men. Cool. With, um, men at arms. The, the, the two elite guys offer to go with you, um, and and they 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 will handpick some dudes out if you want them to from from the shield wall. I think will be be of use. Yeah. Um, may as well uh, lead them in, I guess. Cool. So, uh, beyond lead you into uh, up into the mountains, and these mountains are. Are getting colder at this time of year. Uh, where we are on the map, let's just have a look. See, here. so actually, um, go on to the the normal map, the, the Lothain Valley map. Ooh, where are you? There we go. Yeah. Um, so the White Curtain Mountains are incredibly snowy at, at, at this time of year. The Dragonfall Mountains never really get that snowy, um, but the White Curtains definitely are. Um, so. Across these mountains, to the north of you is Ered Eredrin, which is one of the, which is the largest Dwayor hold in Albion, probably the world actually. And these are the, the, these these mountains have been nicknamed the bones of the world before, so they're very 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 old. And um, this is a place of legend. Like the, the, these these mountains, a lot of world changing events have turned here. A lot of heroes have passed through here. Sarpedon has passed through here. Um, his descendants have passed through here. You know, it, it, it's one of those places. And as you go further up into the mountains, it gets colder and colder and colder. I would like everyone to roll 
a vitality check for me, please? Um, can we have, because uh, earlier in the game we bought winter cloaks. Can we be yes. wearing those? Yes, I assume you would be wearing them. Awesome. Uh, what's that? What's it? Sorry. Vitality. It's a plus, and winter cloaks give a plus three for cold checks. Androcles, you are fine. Lochnia, you are fine. I was getting, also going to ask, is Androcles more tolerant to the cold now? Is that something that's happened it, with it, him? Or is it, it bugs you. You're from a Mediterranean climate, and, and but it, it bugs you. Uh, oh, I meant now. Arden, you are fine. Magic. Um, <laughs> nameless, you um, will suffer a minus uh, 10 to speed rolls. If you ask to do any speed rolls, a minus 10. Uh, that Jeez. also that also means that um, with your with your initiative as well. So it's a mi minus ten, unfortunately. But it's very very cold up here. Uh, as the cold numbs into your bones and stuff, you, you're feeling very 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 sluggish, and you just want to get to the end of the day, pretty much. But Bjorn says it's going to take around a day just to get up here, just to get to where they were ambushed, and he says. Um, Who's leading with with him? Who's there up there with him? At this stage. I mean, for, since we're still like not in sight of the enemy, I'd, I'd imagine that Aunt, uh, Arden would be leading to keep an eye out, and because mm -hmm. she is the ranger person. Yeah, that makes sense. So, Bjorn turned around to you, Arden, and says, "Um, it was just just up here uh, at the top of that ridge. There is where they appeared. I don't think we should go any further." We should probably look around. Yeah, can I roll a perception check? Sure can, and one second. Yoink. Lop. So, I would like you to draw yourselves here, but wait until I draw um, Bjorn first. For size. Yeah, just so you're not drawing any massive people. Goliaths. So he's going to go about here. There you go. And your men are going to go um, they're going to be there. Very nice. So who's who on the on the on these? On the light blue blob. Uh... I'm green. I'm the turquoise color. Cool. So, um, where's Lochnir? Being a dick. Yeah, I'll be there in just a second. No, there he is. The computer's, computer's being a dick. No, not yet. No, cause... He's a little bit slow thinking about an imminent fatherhood. Uh, <laughs> hold on. Uh, I'm square because I'm square, guys. Sounds good. So, um, Bjorn turns around to you and says, um, he points and says, we were ambushed here. And you can see the bodies of your men have been left there. And you, you guys are around, you're, there's a dip here in the land, so they can't really see you. They can't really see you at the moment. If they are around. But they're ambushed here. Right. And he says, uh, he, he points further down and says, the actual quarries down here that we saw Did they ambush you from the sides or from down straight up front? He says they ambushed us from the sides when we were there, uh, but there were a few from straight up front as well, rushing up from the quarry. Mostly oh, so archers or. <laughs> so Sorry, if we uh, take sort of half our forces up on this ridge. Mm hmm. Up them up along this ridge, um, and just sort of scout the ridge, the ridges, keep Bjorn, each other in sight as much as possible. Bjorn nods and says, "I can take the men up the right ridge if you if you all want to take the, the left." Sounds good. Yeah. Cool. Before we do, do that, that, should we do a perception check to see if we see anything? Yeah. Go ahead. You Let's don't need to ask, you just tell me you're rolling one. Ugh, Andrew Place is very distracted by the snow. Mm-hmm. It's very lovely snow. 
Androcles, oh. uh, you have a minus 10 to your speed. Because you are very, very cold. Uh, Locknia, okay. Nameless, okay. Cool. So, Locknia, um, you can see that there are no, there's no one hiding from what you can see from down here or any of these regions. No one's poking over. Um, you can see one or two campfires from down here, though. And you can see that also your men here have been stripped of their weapons and their belongings. Um, bridges then, and uh, head down to where the campfires are and ambush them. Yeah. Into the uh, Bjorn is off. Valley. He's up here with his men. Yeah. Um, yeah. I'll I'll ride over and. First of all, is that, is that like a reasonable plan, everyone? That we, we yeah. just basically our lot come down this ridge, the other lot come down here. When we're within place, we'll um, fire arrows at them and head on down. Uh, in which case, I'll ride over cool. to be on and. and cool. So. Um, you guys are, are walking down here, so so you, you you're advancing quite slowly. You know it's quite cold up here, and you see a column of around oops a daisy. Well, men's turned. Yeah, you see yeah, a yeah. column of men, not Falkir, so they're not anything like that. But it they they look pretty mean. Marching up from down here. Okay, no, hang on, one second. Let me get this, and we're going to go. So they're just marching up here. Can it looks like they're marching out of the valley. Can Arden fire some arrows at them? Um, yeah, let's let's uh, plan an ambush then. I think. We'll wait till they're between us. I think before. Yeah. We... Yeah. Wait. Wait for them to go past. Or, or mm. be well. So well. Are we in sight of Bjorn at the moment? Um. You are, and he's looking down. He's pointing down at them. Uh, I'll signal to. Uh, I'm doing the hand gestures. Of course, he can't see me. Uh, <laughs> I've got a face of radio. Um, yeah, so I gestured to him to, to get down and get ready for an ambush. He, he nods and, and he, he loads his men down. Language. Yeah, he loads his men down because none of them are archers. I oh, know two of them are. Two of them are. I'll uh, I'll translate the hand gestures to Arden because um, you know <laughs> she's not very good with hand gestures. <laughs> Appreciate it. <laughs> Yeah, once they're kind of past us, I think we go. Yeah, the last one won't do anything. There we go. There we go. They're marching on. They seem to be talking. And a few of them are armed with uh, swords that you recognize as ones that Alfred has made. So they've taken our swords. Yeah. Or Alfred is supplying them as well. Let's have uh, all the archers start firing. Oh no. No, no, no. Yeah, let's let's wait. shoot wait. Them. Dean, we're firing. Okay, yeah. firing now. Shoot, okay. shoot. Yeah, once they're about you know, like kind of centered around here, let's yeah, start yeah. Okay. firing them. So I'll, I'll move them up to where they, they're there so that when you start firing at them. Oh, well, no, we started firing when they were, like, right here. Oh, uh, I, I thought you said you were waiting until the center I there. The, the center was here, so they're right in between yeah. us. Yeah, yeah, like, right there. Okay. The, the center of them, yeah, so he's kind there of moving like, for that. So, okay. Um, Arnold will go for the ones furthest away. Cool, go for it. There's some dead people. Jesus, yeah. So, who are you firing at? Uh, first... The one's furthest ahead, so that one and that cool. one, so we don't get away. 
so he is dead uh, as as a arrow f uh, strikes him right in the neck and sends him barreling over sideways. And this man takes one right in the shoulder, shoulder and screams as he goes down. But isn't dead. And the men here, they get into, they immediately get into a shield wall, facing you. But they're not facing the other men. Uh, well, before they get in, at the same time, Arden's uh, shooting. Mm -hmm. I'm going to shoot my bow as well. Nice, okay. go for it. Go for it. At the, at the guys at the back end of the column. Yep. Very good. Oh dear. Oh dear. Okay. Oh dear. <laughs> um, so. Uh, this fucking bow is shit. It's the second time. <laughs> Um, who are you aiming at specifically? Uh, the three, the three guys at the back. So nice. Who first? Who second? Who third? Nice. Okay. So he is struck in the shield, uh, but he still stays standing there. And the other men go to finish their shield wall. They're facing upwards and they're calling. So they're calling more men, basically. And one of them, one of them gets a horn to his mouth and blows it. Can I shoot the guy blowing the horn? Um, you've expanded your turn, so if we roll initiative, and you're first, then yes, you may. Um, but we're now rolling initiative, so please roll initiative. Ooh. 22 for me. Minus 10. 7 for... No, 17 for the total. Five for nameless. No, no, I've already included it. All <laughs> oh, right. Um, it's got the minus two. Um, Andrew Cleese has a minus. <laughs> has an initiative of minus. Because uh, you gave me the minus four. ten as yeah. well. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Um, so Arden, you're going first. Um, let's just see. Wait. Uh. uh she is going to just do hail of barbs. Mm -hmm. at, oh no, because they're not charging, so I can't. Sorry. Um, but she's just going to shoot at the guy blowing the horn first. Okay, cool. Again. Is he down? Nope. That's a hit. Okay, so stop. Okay, we'll cut you. Um, the guy blowing the horn is dead. Then so so he, he's like <laughs> and he just like blows out blood. And it stamp yeah with the, with the, with an arrow through his throat and falls to the floor, and then another one on the end here he is hit, and he is also dead. Uh, they are next. They will start advancing. But all of this movement is doubled because we're going uphill. So uh, that is twenty feet. We need to make. Get into you. Shield wall is going to come up here. Okay, so who is the blue here? That would be me. And who is the other colour here? Blue. It'd be Arden. Oh, That'd be Arden. Okay. Yeah. So uh, two on. Lock, um, two roll. Do twenty. Uh, two on nameless. Okay. Uh, one hit. Uh, it will do. Um, after your armor and your bah, 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 bah. Uh, after everything, it'll do four aggravated damage. Jesus, man. Okay. And two on Arden. Uh, do, do, do. After everything, that will do. Oh, those aren't, those weren't very good. Uh, that will do uh, five superficial damage. So they they come up with their spears and they're jabbing at you, grazing your arms. And uh, and uh, b bashing into your chest plates with with their yeah. with their spears. Um, it's actually your men's turn now. What would you like them to do on the other side? Come up and murder some people. Archers can shoot them in the back of their shield wall. Mm-hmm. Cool. One attack, two attack, three attacks. Nice. So. Two more men go down from the shield wall. Bang and bang. The shield wall is now broken. And what are the other guys going to do? Uh, 
Can they make they it over here? Downhill. They can probably not make it in this turn, but they can get down, get across the next turn, they'll be here. I'd want them to get uh, ready in case. I mean, I think they should be ready in case more reinforcements come. The horn did start. Yeah, like hold their position. Yeah. Right. Cool. We got four people here to the four of us. Don't Sounds good. We need more. Sounds good to me. So who's next? Uh, 17, so is that me next? That'll I be guess. you next, yeah. Next then drop the bow, draw the sword, and go barreling into... Nice. Cool. Uh, so, let me roll some dice. Let you uh, roll some dice. First one was a miss. There's a fluff. Second one is a miss. Yeah, hey. there we go. So, so that is uh, aggravated damage, isn't it? That's that's level two. Uh, uh, I think it's less. That'll be damage two. Whatever damage two is. Oh, are you there? Yeah, yeah. Can you hear me? Uh, no, Ooh. I didn't hear what you said. What you say? I hear you now. Um, all right. Okay. Well, no, all right. Uh, just, What's your um, damage? Yeah, I'll just check. It's superficial. Yep, superficial. Um, and how many? Twelve. Twelve, super twelve superficial. So. Plus your might, yeah. Six superficial. What's your? Plus your might. Ah, sorry. Plus seven. Oh shit! No, he's dead. Yeah, he's he's gone. So um, so you 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 cleave up and you miss twice, but your third one you catch him right in the temple and send him spinning down the slope. That's him gone. Um, who's next? I think it's nameless next. I think it would be me. Right. So let's start swinging. Um, I need to check what my a new spear contributed. I think it's plus eight. Yep. That's one. Mm hmm. Two. Mm hmm. Three. One man is dead. Hoofed into the air. He's the only one in, well, in range, really, without you getting into, into Arden's line. Yeah. Androcles is next. I think I'm just gonna come up and finish take this guy down. Mm hmm So what? 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 Yep, he is dead. He is going down the slope. So at the end of that. Yeah. Uh, that's uh I still have uh full action left. Yep, fine, we can go into that next. I'm just putting these guys down now so you know what's going on. Yeah. yeah. The more men run out of the... And you're thinking this is the main force now. And so the scouts were coming out. Now the main force is here. Okay, I think I'm going to just get... Are, are, do they have any archers specifically? No. Or is it all just fighting men? Okay, These are so all I'm fighting going men. to... I'm going to... Really, I'm just going to um, get Arden... Like, if I can just like move her back a little bit so she's not front line. Um, by the way... Lochnia, don't panic. These are further back than what they look. So they're down here. But I can't move them if they're down here. So I'm going to draw a little, uh, little thing. So they're down here. They're just coming out now. Yeah. I think I'm going to move up um, kind of alongside uh, Nameless in front of Arden. Mm -hmm. Like, mm -hmm. kind of give her a path to shoot through. Yeah. If you but make contact so with if... the blue box, then you can shoot them, essentially. If you can what? If you make contact with the blue box, you can shoot them. That's where they are. I can't move them if they put them there, yeah. so... Okay. So, oh, okay. So, um, actually then, I'll move... I'll move just the ten feet up and go stand next to, um... A lock near then. And oh. be just r ready up for them. Nice. Alright. Now, speaking of not being able to move it, I'm going to have to move the box now. 
that is now where they are. Anyone like to do anything? Uh, spear oh. shot. Cool. Yeah. Um, okay, let, let, let's roll initiative, actually. We're rolling initiative. Uh, 1d20. Oh, dear. Oh, sorry. For that's, him. Uh, that's not a plus 9. That's the minus 1. So mm -hmm. I'm, I'm, I'm going last again. Okay. Sorry. I forgot. I forgot. Oh, to re do the right roll. So, um, it will be Arden first. Hey, she's going to, like, uh, without using, like, a move, just kind of... I'm trying to see where I can go, where I'm not, where there isn't someone in the way on my own team, because I don't want to shoot them. Oh, if I yeah, move further, move. if I move further up the ridge, I'm sit, like I'm not going to be shooting them, right? Yeah. The angle. Yep. Okay, let me see if I can actually grab the circle. Okay, I'll move up there. Um, it's gonna do spear shot like this. One, One two, two, three, four, four five. five. So describe to me what happens with spear shot. Uh, blah, 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 blah. Um, if there is okay, it does double damage in the straight line, the full length of your weapon range. Any character saying that line is hit by the arrow, and that's a seventeen. Does it say, so does it say any enemy or any character? Oh, it says any character. I'm afraid Lochnia is getting a arrow up the arse. Oh, then... If she, so swing, I, if she shoots, um... Can like, I read for that? No. Oh, I mean, you can, you can aim... The, if she just aimed this way, that puts her... If right aimed that in. way, you would have a lot less men you'd be hitting. You'd hit, be hitting one, two, three, four, instead of one, two, three, four, five, six. You can do but that. what if I do it this way? Well, that's not, where, no, that's not where they are. They're at, they're at the blue... Yeah, that's box. what I'm saying. If she shoots this way... Yeah. Where, 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 yeah, where my line is, the the forty three foot line. Yeah, that that'll be around. Yeah. That'll be four. Yeah, that'll be four. Sorry, I didn't realize it was any character. Yeah, so you need to be very careful when you're reading your rules, but uh, you'll know for next time now, which is good. Um, so are we are we taking the four? Or are we going with the six? Oh, I don't want to shoot Lochnir. Okay. If I have a chance to So we're going with a four. Over, no, that's fine. That's, that's great. Okay. We're going with a four. So. But you don't want to shoot Lochnir again. <laughs> yeah. So. 13 aggravated times two. So it's 26 aggravated. One, two, three, and four. So, the, so, the, so this arrow just slices through two, and you fire another one, and it slices through another two, and they just drop, drop to the ground. Right, what else would you like to do? Um, Ale of Barbs. Um, then, yeah, they, they, they are technically charging. Yes, they are technically charging. Okay, then I'll shoot at, like, this guy, this guy, mm -hmm. this guy. Yep. Um, I don't think you so... select them. I think you just fire until they're all dead. Oh, okay. But... So, can I, since I have eight in my weapons thing, can I fire it eight times? Yes, you can. Two, three, four, five, five, six, seven. Alright, um, so, as these guys are charging up, I'm going to have to roll to see if I can... Six. Okay, two of them are saved by their shields. The others... One, two, three, four... Five are downed by arrows as, as they're coming in. All right, but they will in their turn. They are on to. They are on ba, 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 twelve. I think everyone is is above them. Is everyone above them? Lockney is definitely above them. In terms of order, uh, I'm not. I don't think I roll because I, I, I misrolled mine, so it's actually a five, not a fifteen. Okay. And uh, nameless, you are a sixteen, yeah. Yes, I okay. think it goes nameless, Lochnir, you guys. Yeah, and then. I'm thirteen. Cool. So nameless, Lochnir, the enemies, and then okay, cool. Nameless, what are we doing? Are you there? 
Have you muted yourself? I had not I have apparently. I've been speaking this whole time. <laughs> I've even answered you and you've carried on as though I did, so good job. Um, <laughs> I'm not good at giving information. Yeah, yeah. Right. So can, can someone draw an arrow? I always forget how to do it. Uh, you do um, the, the circle and the... Like, what are you trying to get to? Have they uh, still the blue box, or have they moved so up? I, I get uh, they, are moved, they are where they are now, so I get rid of this blue box. They are where exactly where they are. And then I will start smashing them in the face, I guess. Oh, wait, yep. actually. Let's do my feet to begin with. Uh, so if I do the manticore sting... Mm -hmm. uh, um, so, plus eight, um, and I will hit the three directly to the left of me mm -hmm. in a straight line. Yeah. There you go. That's a, a crit, because it hits a crit. Mm -hmm. um, so that's aggravated damage, uh, 18 aggravated damage with armor piercing five. Yeah. So three of them just like, yeah. Yeah thrown in there. okay um so that's one attack so i am going to move up again mm -hmm. one move to get into range there yep and i'm going to manticore sting again cool through the four sort of like directly below me mm -hmm. yeah i can see that cool Oh, that's less good. Is that a hit? I'm afraid not. I'm afraid not. Um, I would. That that is a marginal, so it's up to me. Because um, mm -hmm. because you're you've moved and then moved again, you are on on steady. If you planted your feet and you're just standing there and doing that, then yes, it would be a hit. Just about. But uh, could, with, could uh, I yeah. use my reluctant hero and just make it a hit? Um, if you if you action? if you admit that nameless beat you fair and square three times, then yes, you can. <laughs> <laughs> he didn't even beat me fair and square twice. There you go. Three times. He only beat. There you go. He only be, he only beat times. me. He's only <laughs> beat me the once. I, I'm just I'm just you you have to be prepared for for for. Basically, what I'm trying to say is, Androcles needs to be prepared to. Um, take that on the chin for the for the for the morale of of nameless to keep him happy. If he's not w willing to do that, then you're not at the relationship stage where you can give him. Well, the 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 one that lets me hit things, there, there's there's the two different parts to it. The one that uh, ah, okay. lets me give up an action point mm -hmm. didn't require that. Then the do one, that. The one the second part that required the uh, Turn the to friendship. Crit. Yeah. We, we, no, the, no, the the uh, this one that required a friendship means that if anyone within ten feet misses an attack. Then I just get to attack them. Oh, yeah. So the uh, the just letting them, uh, you know, giving them a hit just means I lose an action point. Mm -hmm. The it was the, the it, um, but if if I am close to them, then I don't have to use an action point. I just get extra attacks. Nice. Okay. All right. Uh, um. So we'll go with that then. So you are giving. Nameless an action. I'm I'm taking it, or or you converting it oh, into. It's actually, yeah, I convert one of my actions mm -hmm. into turning his attack into a crit. Nice. Okay, that's fine. So um um I as 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 you swing nameless, um you miss, but then, I, I the guys shift in the shield in the shield wall there, and Androcles shouts out that you've got people on your left, and you just about catch them in time and drive the uh the. The spear tip home through three of them. There we go. Now it's up to you whether you want to admit that it, you, you've got help there or not, or you can just say you saw them anyway. But it's up to you. Not anything. I beat him three times fair and square. <laughs> <laughs> right. I mean, I literally knocked you out of a tower the second time. I don't even know how how you can pretend <laughs> to think you won that fight. I literally punched you. You flew out the building, and that was the end of it. You got help from gravity, so you didn't do it alone. So. I'm just gonna go, uh, guys. I think we have uh, more pressing things to focus on right now. So there's... I'll trap the guy in front of me. If it's my turn. Yeah, go ahead. I'm just gonna move these guys up because they're not gonna be hitting. Attempt. Attempt. 
Go ahead. Ooh, nice. Yeah, so 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 this, so this guy takes an absolute pummeling. <laughs> this poor dude. <laughs> um, raises raises his shield up, and um, yeah, Lockney just brings his sword down three times, cracks the shield and the arm underneath, and then goes through the arm and buries his his head, his, his sword in the forehead of the poor guy, and then uses his puts his foot on his chest and then just levers the sword out and lets him fall down the slope. <laughs> and that's that's the end of him. So. Uh, nameless, uh, trouble time. Uh, they, they have used one action, so they only get one attack each. Five d twenty. Oh dear. Um, so that is after your armor. Um, four superficial. Three superficial, four superficial, four superficial, four superficial. Four, okay. eight, twelve, sixteen. You might think that I'm 18. unconscious, okay. but my armor has a special rule. Okay. <laughs> um, yeah, um, I forgot to use it in the last one as well, so I guess I'll do that. So as well. name name what it is first, and no, I know. What uh, it is. So whenever the wearer of uh, the mantle takes damage, they may roll a d6 on a six. All damage from this attack is ignored. Nice. So, would you have to roll I mean, for each of the attacks, or is it no? Just, yeah, just, just, just all damage from the attacks that are coming in. Oh, really? Yeah. Okay, so this is the last turn. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah. So I'm full health. Have some of that, <laughs> right? Okay. I'm gonna give uh, you a full attack round for that. Go ahead. And uh, these poor guys, man, they just, yeah. just need a break. So, um... <laughs> you wrote the rules. <laughs> you did. I did. It's one in six chance. To be fair, I mean. So full right. attack round. Yeah. Two, three. Let's crack some heads. Yeah. That's that's one definitely dead. Um, two nineteen, two dead. And this guy is, is staggers backwards out of the fight up the slope, and looks looks at another guy sliding down in a pool of blood. Down the end. He's just like, oh okay, and he starts running. He's going over here. Um, now it is your men's turn. Uh, they will fire their arrows. So uh, three each, so sixty twenty. No ones, please. Okay, cool. Um, so two guys go down in a hail of arrows, and this one guy is now running off into the. Before he gets away. You, you can certainly shoot him. He, he he hasn't even seen you're there. You're on the other side, so. Nice. Yeah, he he's dead. He's dead. He only had a little bit of health left, so he's now dead. And all is quiet. Um, Bjorn gets down from here with his men and says, um, Our boys didn't even get to get the swords wet there. But at least now they've seen you guys in action. And like one of them looks crestfallen. <laughs> like, absolutely. <laughs> like, what was this? <laughs> like, what has just happened? Um, so, the, the, the floor of this valley is an abattoir at the moment. There's blood everywhere. And what would you like to do? What would you like to do? Are there any I survivors? There are no survivors. Mm -hmm. oh, there so was almost a survivor. Arden fixed that. There was almost I think a survivor. Yeah. Hercules wants to just head to their camp and see what he can find there. Sweet. Does everyone everyone want to do that? To me, loot, loot. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, Androcles was also would suggest to the men that since they've decided to help themselves to our arms, maybe we should believe them of theirs and use it to equip some of our. You know, oh, thought, men who don't have their own actual equipment. arm. <laughs> <laughs> Not all of us are you, all right? Oh, oh man. <laughs> Not all of us are you. <laughs> so, you guys walk into this valley, and it looks like um, a meteor crater. It's not, but it looks like, you know, it, 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 um, a, quite a big meteor crater. Um, down here, you can actually see that there is a camp here where they fire in the middle and there are several tents and there, there is wind blowing through this mountain pass and all around there is 
jagged black stone all around the place. That obsidian coloured stone. Looks very glassy, sticking up through the through the ground here. And that's all you see for now. So so what would you like to do? Do we is this uh do we recognize this material as if you wish to go up to it and examine it, you can certainly do so. Yeah. Cool. Roll a perception check for me. Does this count as investigating? It does count as investigating. <laughs> um, it's stone. Yeah, yeah. It's it's pretty, but you 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 know oh, yeah, it looks nice. Pretty stone. <laughs> yeah, it looks pretty cool. <laughs> you still thinking about mother? whether you can see her or not. <laughs> no metagaming. I'm not! Like, I'm just hoping someone else takes... No, yeah, 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 ex exactly. Like, metagaming. <laughs> Please don't do that. Um, so, um, there is... Uh, yeah, the camp is, is around here, so what, what would everyone else like to do? And including Arden as well. You're not, you're not out, out... Yeah, this isn't a turn. <laughs> So I'm investigating this rock. You know that you can yeah. do whatever you wish. Hey, I'm gonna I'm gonna head straight into their tents and see what they've got. Cool. So you do find a few knapsacks around. So there's there's food and water and and there are there is one piece a uh, parchment that you find. Um, you may unroll it if you wish to have a little look. See. Yeah. It, have a look -see. Is, it is a set of orders from uh, the uh, uh, a group called the Blackbird Coterie. And the Blackbird Coterie um, are their their symbol is a black mockingbird, and they are smugglers. So these are people who look for rare artifacts to sell Ooh. on the medieval version of the black market, so to speak. And is it the is it the, the really really dark gray market? Really dark gray market. Why, why not? Yeah. Um, <laughs> so on, on the on the this piece of paper, you see uh, these are are orders for a man called Garlan, who is obviously one of the men who is in the, or the captain of the men who are in the, in the past there, and he and he is told to come to this past to investigate um, sightings of a dragon, basically, and, and wherever dragons are, sometimes they leave the earth or they, they you know they, they leave behind certain bits of treasure. Um, dragons at this point they are very semi-legendary, so so people know they existed, but you know. Um, so, so a lot of the faff, kind of like vampires. When vampires ever came back, everyone would be like, throw garlic at them, even though that would do nothing, you know. Um, so it's the same thing here. Everyone thinks every dragon is Smaug, essentially. Like, oh my god, there's going to be loads of gold. Um, obviously, load of rubbish. Uh, but uh, they, they've been sent up here anyway, just to have a little look around, see what, see what they can poke around and find. When you're looking around, you can see that this is, um, this is... This was not a place where a dragon was roosting, like, at all. But it looks like a dragon's been here. You can see huge claw marks over all of the sides of the canyon. And you can see burn marks all over the place. And and you can see where, where huge pieces of rock have been smashed away, like from heavy, heavy impacts uh, on the floor as well. And that, that seems to have what has brought up the black stone from the from the floor. It's kind of jag it's very jagged in it. It shoots up through the ground, um sort of like um almost glass, almost like really sharp glass. I mean, mm, that looks interesting. It's just <laughs> it look like it would be worth <laughs> money to Androcles. Like, because it, it, if it looks like glass, glass wouldn't make. Go ahead and roll a perception check because I don't think my wife is going to let you leave this canyon until you actually do I a perception know. check. So maybe, yeah, okay. Um, <laughs> you, 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 you tap your sword to this stone, and you, you know it's ferrite, so it's very, very, very valuable. And there seems to oh, be se seem to be several tons Sorry. of it poking up through the ground, yeah, at different intervals. Uh, I'm I'm gonna turn to the others and be like, guys, I think we're um, we're pretty much sorted for money. And I'm gonna I'm, gesture to I'm the not ground. Digging that up. I'm always digging holes. I'm not digging. I mean, <laughs> but you're so good at it. No. <laughs> <laughs> no, not even not even playing to your your vanity <laughs> being good things. No. Uh, everyone, roll perception check for me. 
Do I need to make another one? Here's my yeah. 20 hold. Sure. Hold on. <laughs> nice. Okay. Androcles sees everything. So, Androcles, you do see on the side of this canyon there are carvings. And they look like Dwayor carvings. It's a very runic in style. You see there is a, a Dwayor king by the name of Hraidmar. Okay. Let me just. Hraidmar. And let me just double check if his name is Harid Mark. I want to get that right. Uh, yep, yeah, Harid Mark. And he is beseeching a man who looks kind of, you know, he, he isn't nameless, right? Just before anyone jumps to, oh my god, no, it's not nameless. But there is a man who looks in a similar armor to nameless. And with a, with a haughty look in his face. He doesn't look like he's an elf, though. He looks like he's a sunborn. So he looks, um, he looks very, you know, um, stoic, and it seems like he's being beseeched by this Shridemar to do something. The next slide along, along the the mountain wall, it's quite big. Is Shridemar marching in uh, uh, this this figure marching into the mountains on the uh, at the at the behest of Shridemar, the king of the Dwayor? And the third one is him discovering a great dragon and battling this dragon to the death over several frescoes in the. In the mountainside, and the last one is him casting them the dragon down, and uh, the dragon turning into a person, and then this figure picking up the person and burying them in the mountains, and then he and then the very 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 last fresco, very a lot smaller as you sweep off a bit of snow, is the dwarven king. On his knees, crying as, as the as the the warrior is accusing him of something. It seems him pointing at him very angrily, and that's the last bit of thing that you can see here. And when you turn around, Arden, you, you're noticing there are bones all over the place here, all over the place, and they're very large, like old bones or fresh bones. Very old bones. Do they look like they might be dragon bones? They look like they might be dragon bones. There is definitely a, a, a protrusion of a wing, which is uh, about 20 meters across. Can I look for, like... I, well, I want to touch one of the dragon bones, because that's awesome. It's a dragon bone. Yeah, um, it's cold. And you, you can sort of feel like, like a resonant heat within it. Can but we like, use it to make weapons and... Build that's stuff? what I was thinking. You can certainly try. I mean, I think between the ferrite and the uh, dragon bones, I think we are going to... I'm just going to have... Um, I was thinking of just sending Bjorn down to get any of the laborers we can get and just start taking stuff out of here. Um, Some men we, to guard we do, it. We do still have one thing that we need to do. Actually look at the quarry that he saw. I mean, yeah, there's that, but there's also the ferrite. We yeah, no, I, I get that. That's that, that money and stuff, but we still need the stone like, um, for like, the actual walls. Like, like Beyond, <laughs> yeah. just, Beyond just stands next to you and shrugs and says, um, I'm not going to lie to you, boss. Um, I thought this was the quarry. And he's looking oh, around. Yeah. <laughs> he's looking around. He says, well, I thought they were guarding a quarry. Like, what do you want from me? With shiny rock. I didn't see the shiny rock. I just saw there's loads of rock down here. And it turns out it's rock, 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 and shiny. So said, it turns out it's dragon bones. Surrounded by dragon bones. We can and you buy it was all the boring. stone we need with this ferrite. And then I'm going to clip him around the back of the head. He's, 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 just, <laughs> he's just like he, he looks to you, looking at you like, what, 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 what did I do? Look, doesn't matter. Let's get some men up here and let's get to work on some of this. We need to. We should secure this site as best we can as well. Yeah, we definitely Bjorn should send some troops. <sighs> We've got plenty of men who can who will help with the digging. Nameless, but um, Androcles once is also he's kind of his curiosity is kind of gotten getting the better of him. He's actually gonna follow the um, as best he can follow the dragon bones. See if he can find the dragon skull. Um, you can't quite find it, no. Um, um, you, looking around, the, the, the bones seem very scattered. This has been here for thousands of years, it looks like, yeah. from, uh, from your estimation. So, 
No, you, you can't. You can't really see anything. All right. Um, well, but what what we can do, you. what we can do is we can end the session there. And as you guys are walking out of the, of the valley, uh, we can have Androcles looking back at the frescoes, with like a very, you know, quizzical look, and then just marching off into the mist. So that that that's how we look. Because we're only getting a bit late mm -hmm. now, so I wanted to just call it there. And, uh, can we bring some bone samples with us to see if we can sure, make any weapons? Sure. Yeah. Sure. Nice. Sure. Okay. I gotta no. go, guys. I'm sorry. No problem. Sure. Um, but cheers, like, yeah, everyone gets a session point. Everyone gets another session point as well, because for last time as well, because I, I did you one last time. So you get to choose one of your powers, one of your five powers there. Uh -huh. So cheers. Thank you very much for that. Thanks, man. Cool. Thank you. I'll, I'll speak to you guys next time. Yeah, take it easy. Yeah. But, bye now. Bye. Yeah, just, um, oh, go we'll on. figure it out. Uh, so I was just going to say, we'll figure out when the next session is. Oh, yeah, sure, man. Yeah, no worries. Yeah, we'll do it. Alright, bye guys. Bye now. Bye. 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 That is the session one of uh, number two of uh, of um, se season two of the Cell Sword campaign. So cheers for that. Thanks for watching. And I'll speak to you guys later. Oh, and by the way, um, as we're going forward, things are going to get a lot more sandboxy. So whilst I, I, might, I might prod the party in certain different directions um, if they don't take the bait I will just take the lead and run them through another session um, but it's, it's very sandboxy so anytime they want to just jump in and go somewhere or do something they can do so um, I'll speak to you guys next time and I'll see you then